All praises to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Vain Beauty. That's tonight's topic, Vain Beauty. Let's open up with the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Let's start there. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Come on. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were mm -hmm. written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So the things that were written aforetime were written for us to learn from. You understand? That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Listen, we must put our comfort, we're gonna find, we must find our comfort in the word of God. You're not gonna find comfort in a drink. You're not gonna find comfort in a um, cigarette. You're not gonna find comfort in dealing with prostitutes. You're only gonna find comfort in the word of the most High God. Read that again. Romans chapter 15, verse four. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written Read. for our land. Come on. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So the scriptures is what's going to comfort us. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Genesis 15, verse 13. We must understand what happened in the past to understand where we are because he used to keep repeating himself over and over. You understand? The Lord, the Lord left all these writings for us so that we can study our history and be able to know what's to come how things are going to unfold, history and prophecy. So we keep God's commandments, we can prepare ourselves for both. All right, read that. Genesis 15, verse 13. Come on. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Read. And he said unto Abram, Know of a shorty that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, mm -hmm. and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. So now the Lord is, 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 um, is giving our forefather Abraham a vision of what's going to happen to his children, us, the 12 tribes of Israel. What's going to happen to us? We're going to go into the land that is not ours, okay? And we are going to be slaves in that land. And we're going to serve slavery 400 years. You understand? So guess what? This happened, okay? This happened because we broke God's commandments during the time when we were called the sons of God. So now, as a punishment, the Lord is showing our forefather Abraham what's going to happen to us in, in, in when we go into slavery and we're going to be enslaved. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. Okay, give me Exodus 12. Exodus chapter 12, read verse 37. We're going to read down. Exodus chapter 12, verse 37. Go ahead. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Because when we left Egypt, Ramses the second was the king, was the pharaoh that was ruling over us, okay? The one that he, he treated our forefathers, they, they, they ruled over us with rigor, okay? Ready? And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Great. And flocks and herds, even very much cattle. The mixed multitude is the other nation that was also in Egypt. You understand? When we got delivered, they said, listen, this is our chance to also escape. Okay, go ahead. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For Great. it was not leavened. Come on. Because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Because we left Egypt in haste, because we were on the run. That's when we were delivered by the Most High God, right? Now the sojourning of the children of Israel, who dwelt in Egypt, was 430 years. Was how long now? 430 years. Was 430 years. The 30 years is during the time of Joseph, during the time when our forefather uh, Jacob went into Egypt. So that's 30 years. That's when we were well taken care of during the time of Joseph and so forth. So the 400 years, the 400 years that we read about in Genesis 15 verse 13, the prophecy that was shown to our forefather Abraham, what would happen to his children, his seed. Okay, read that again. Exodus chapter 12 verse 40. Read. 
Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Was 430 years, go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Because that's when we got delivered. Because we're still, we're still observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Don't get it twisted. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 9. Because remember, the most High God, he delivered, he destroyed the Egyptians when he was delivering us. But he had to smite the Egyptians to show us that the so-called gods that we're worshipping in Egypt, they are no gods at all. You understand? You know what? Hold that. Give me the book of Jeremiah real quick. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah. I'm going to show you what the Lord said here in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the second chapter. Okay. No, no, Jeremiah chapter. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Jeremiah, the second chapter. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Read that. Sorry, my notes. Let me write it down. Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. Has the nation changed their gods? Which are yet no gods. Stop right there. Have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? The, the Lord is asking, he says, have the, these other nations changed their gods? You understand? Which are yet no gods. The Lord is telling you know through Jeremiah that these other nations, they have no gods. You understand? The so-called gods which they say they are gods, they are nothing. They are no gods at all. They are just dumb idols. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go ahead. But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, but we, the children of Israel, we have changed the God's glory that he put upon us. You understand? He says, we've done that for that which does not profit. What doesn't profit? The graven images. You understand? The graven image, they don't profit nothing. But we as a nation, the nation didn't change the idols they worship, but we have changed our true and living God, the God of heaven and earth, to worship the, the idols of these other nations. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Give me that in Habakkuk. Okay, Habakkuk 2 verse 18. Let's get there. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18. Right. What profited the graven image that the maker thereof had graven it? Uh -huh. The molten image and the teacher of lies. You see that thing? The Lord is asking, he says, what profited the graven image that the maker thereof has graven it? Because somebody had to sit down to cut this thing for people, men and women to worship. That's why the Lord is saying, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. What doesn't profit? The graven image don't profit. You understand? That the maker thereof has graven it. Right? And the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. To make dumb idols. So these graven images, these are just dumb idols which have no breath. They are dumb idols which have no breath. But guess what? As a nation today, the most High God says the 12 tribes of Israel, we are worshiping idols as a nation. That's what he said right there. You understand? Go ahead. Woe unto him that says to the wood, awake. Mm -hmm. The dumb stone arise. It you shall see teach. We are saying to the wood, awake. We are saying to the dumb stone, arise and teach. And he's not going to do that. Because these are dumb idols in verse 18. The wood goes into the Christian cross. The stone goes into the cover stone. That black rock, that black rock, that black dumb rock in Mecca. Go ahead. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. You see that thing? There is no breath at all in the midst of it. Because these are dumb idols. And guess what? That as a nation, we have done that thing. Worshipping these dumb idols. You understand? And that's what we were doing when we were in Egypt. So it is today. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15. Okay. Let's read verse 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For neither did the mischievous invention of man deceive us, mm -hmm. nor an image spotted with diverse colors, the painter's fruitless labor. The painter's fruitless labor. So the mischievous inventions of man, 
is this dime idol? Is this graven images that a man has to sit down to cut this thing for men and women to worship? The Lord is saying, guess what? Those are mischievous inventions of men. You understand? They are designed to go against God's law. They are designed to go against the God of heaven and earth. That's what he said right there. Okay? He says, no, an image spotted with diverse colors, silver, gold. You understand? They paint us fruitless labor. Because this thing cannot bear no fruit. It doesn't profit. Okay, go ahead. The sight whereof entices fools to last after it. You see that thing? The sight thereof entices fools. Meaning that when you look at it, it says a fool will be enticed by that. Okay? That's why in Egypt, we were enticed by these things. So now in spiritual Egypt, we are enticed by these dumb idols. Okay? Go ahead. And so they desire the form of a dead image that has no breath. You see that thing? Now, because it entices fools, those that don't keep God's, God's commandments, the Lord is saying what? Read that part again. Verse, uh, verse 5 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 5. Come on. The sight whereof entices fools to last, to last after it. Mm -hmm. And so they desire the form of a dead image that has no breath. So the Lord is saying, because our people is, God says, because our people is foolish. So foolish that they're going to now bow down to dumb idols. You understand? It's that the sight thereof entices fools to last after it. So when we were in Egypt, we worshipped their, their idols. We worship all their idols of the Canaanites, the Egyptians, the Pharaohs. You understand? So today we are in spiritual Egypt. We are doing the, the Lord is saying, the 12 tribes of Israel are doing the same thing. You understand? Desiring the form of a dead image that has no breath, that has no profit therein. Go ahead. Both they that make them. Stop right there. They that, hold on. Both they that make them, those that make these dumb idols, those that desire these dumb idols, they that lust after these dumb idols. Go ahead. They that desire them. They that desire these dumb idols that have no breath. Come on. And they that worship them. And they that worship them. So they make them, they desire them, they make them to desire them and to worship them. Go ahead. Are lovers of evil things. You see that thing right there? The most High God says, worshiping of idols, idolatry, the most High God says, you are a lover of evil things. You love evil things. That's why today our people, what do they do? They bleach their skin. That's idolatry. Because who are they worshiping? They are changing the, the way the Lord made them to look like the oppressor. That's idolatry. The most High God says, they are lovers of evil things. You know, sisters be putting fake up on, not makeup, yeah, fake up. They, they put on fake up, you don't even recognize who they are. You understand? They've got long eyelashes, they call them umbrellas and all that. You understand? They put a fake hair on, fake nails, put makeup on and all that. You can't recognize them. You understand? The Lord says, you are lovers of evil things. Why? Because the beauty that the Lord has given you, now you, it, become, it has become vain beauty. It becomes vain. It's no longer the beauty that the Lord put upon you. It's the new type of beauty, which is vain beauty, that your oppressor has defined. And that because you love evil things, you go for that. Because you worship idols, you go for that stuff. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Read again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 6. Come on, come on. Both they that make Go ahead. them, they that desire them, and they that worship them are lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust Wait. upon. The Lord says you are worthy to have such things to trust upon because you love evil things. You understand? Dumb idols. Because that's all that, all that, that's idolatry, okay? That's why today's nice topic is called vain beauty. Vain beauty. And our sisters today, today, sisters, tonight is your night, okay? Tonight is your night. I was dealing with a man last week. Tonight I'm going to deal with the sisters this day. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 14, read verse 27. Okay, you know what? Start at verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 12. I want to show you how deep idolatry goes. Because when we were in Egypt, we were worshipping idols. Okay? 
So it is today in spiritual Egypt. I'm dealing with beauty this day. Vain beauty. Read what you got. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Read. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Mm -hmm. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see that thing? The devising of idols. The makers of these idols. The makers of these graven images. You see what the Bible is saying? The most I say is that it's the beginning of spiritual fornication. Because you are fornicating spiritual. You understand? You start worshipping graven images. You understand? You start worshipping the inventions of men. Mischievous inventions of men. The Lord says you start worshipping them. He says, guess what? He says, the invention of these things is how life has been corrupted upon this earth. The mind of men. The mind of men has been completely destroyed. By worshipping of idols. Let's see what is the objective of this. Keep reading. Next verse. Come on. For neither were they from the beginning. Neither shall they be forever. They are not going to be here forever. They are going to be destroyed when the Lord returns. Go ahead. For by the vain glory of men. Uh -huh. They entered into the world. You see that thing? The reason why these idols are made. The reason why these idols are created. They understand and their worship is because of what is as by vain glory of men. Men wanted to worship themselves. You understand? Wanted them to worship themselves and wanted themselves to be worshipped. Okay. That's why why do you think the selfie was invented? What do you think the selfie is about? The selfie is about what? Self-obsession. You understand? Having a self-obsessed self-image. You just obsessed with yourself. That's what that's what that's that's what that's what selfies is about. The spirit behind the selfies is about that. You understand? Worshipping yourself. That's why you see even young kids, they be taking selfies, especially the girls. You know, girls will be taking selfies, they have to they have to turn in a way that they have to show their booty and all that. What is that called? Idolatry. You understand? Read the thing again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 14. Go ahead. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, shall they come shortly to an end. Okay, go back to Jeremiah 2, verse 11. Let's go back there. Because they are, they are the most high God, he asked the question to Jeremiah. Okay, so let's go back there. Watch this. Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. Has a nation changed their gods? Which are yet no gods. Which are yet no gods. Read. But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. The Lord is saying, the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes, is that we have changed our glory for that which does not profit. What doesn't profit us? These graven images. These idols that the nations are worshipping which are no gods. The Lord says, we have fallen so low, we, start, we started worshipping frogs in Egypt. We had fallen so low, we started worshipping crocodiles. We had fallen so low, we started worshipping the rain. We started worshipping the grass. We started worshipping just dumb stuff in Egypt. We started worshipping cows. Hmm? That's how low we fell in Egypt. So how much more today in spiritual Egypt? How much more do you think the children of Israel as a nation, how much more do you think we've been destroyed? It's worse than you can possibly imagine. You understand? Read that again. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? Mm -hmm. But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. You see that we've changed our glory for that which doesn't profit. Jump down to verse 13. What's this? Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Go ahead. For my people have committed two evils. Mm -hmm. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. That's the first evil. That is the first evil that we've committed. Is God, the most that God says we have forsaken the fountain of living water. Okay, go ahead. And hew them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So you see the cistern is a what? Is a container, is a vessel that's supposed to hold water. The Lord is saying, now he says we have hewn out ourselves broken cisterns that can hold no water. I'm going to deal with each one. Let's deal with the fountains of living water. The Lord says we have forsaken the fountains of living water. Watch this. Give me that in with uh, Sarah chapter 1. Ecclesiastes. Okay. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 1, read verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. Is the what? Is the fountain of wisdom. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. Go ahead. And her ways are everlasting commandments. And her ways, the ways of the most high God, they are everlasting commandments. So the Lord is saying, the first evil that we've committed is what? We've forsaken his word. We've forsaken his commandments. You understand? The fountain of living waters. Because God's laws, it gives us life. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Go ahead. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. You see that thing? They have forsaken me, the, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. What is that? The laws of God. God's commandments, that's the fountains of living water. Read. And hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You understand? It says now we are holding out, we are holding out cisterns that can hold no water. I'm gonna show you. Watch this. Give me wisdom. Give me give me uh Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Oh, ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, mm -hmm. or the wheel broken at the cistern. Or the wheel broken at the cistern, because that's where we will get what? That's where we will get what? That's where we get our wisdom. Cisterns, they hold water. You understand? The water making reference to the word of the most High God. But now, what have we done? What we've done is this. Give me that in Baruch 3. Okay? Baruch. Baruch 3 verse 10. Watch this. Baruch chapter 3 verse 10. Come on. How happened is it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, Wait. That, thou, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. You see what he's saying? It says, what happened is that, that thou art, that you are in your enemy's land, that thou waxing old in a strange country, that thou defiled with the dead. The Lord is saying, what happened to you, Israelite? The greatest nation on earth, now the Lord is saying, we are defiled with the dead. We are spiritually dead. How did we get defiled with the dead? Because the nations are dead. The Lord is saying, these nations that are dead, they've defiled us. How did they defile us? They taught us what? Their customs and traditions. You understand? They've taught us their customs and traditions, and they taught us to worship their idols. Understand that? That's why it says that thou art defiled with the dead. The dead, the, the nations have defiled. You understand? Watch this. Get that in Colossians 2 verse 8. The nations have defiled the black men and the black women. Okay. Colossians 2, read verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. Beware, lest any man spoil you through lest philosophy. Lest any man do what? Beware, lest any man spoil you. Lest any man, any man, any man. Remember, Colossi was a what? Was a Greek island. Colossi. You understand? The children of Israel that were scattered in a Greek island called Colossus. That's why the letter was written to the Colossians. Okay? So, these are the Greeks. It says, beware lest any man, any man. Because remember, when, 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 when Rome came into power, they swallowed the Greeks. So now you've got Greco-Roman Empire rule. You understand? So when it says any man, he's talking about Rome. He's talking about Greek. That's the any man during that time. Today, the any man is Europe, America. You understand? The French, the British, the Dutchmen. Those are the any men of today because it's still the same people back then. Okay? That's what they call themselves back then. But today, they call themselves Americans. They call themselves Europeans. Okay? Read that again. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Read. 
Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So the way we are going to be defined, the way we're gonna you you're gonna you out broken systems, systems that cannot hold no water. We are going to be what we are going to be given philosophies and vain deceit of men, man-made doctrines, man-made traditions. That's what the Lord says. That's how we are going to be defiled. That's how we are going to be mentally, spiritually, and physically destroyed through philosophies and vain deceit of men. Right? After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. You understand? That's how we are spoiled. We are spoiled, after, we are spoiled by philosophies of men. We are spoiled by vain deceit of mischievous inventions of men. Okay? And traditions of men. Man made tradition. Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world. Great. And not, and not after Christ. And not after Christ. So, guess what? The philosophy, the vain deceit, the traditions of men, that's politics. Politics is a tradition of men. Christianity, that's a tradition of men. Because it's not of the Bible, it's not of the law. You understand? It's not of the law. So guess what? Those are vain deceits. Those are traditions of, those are man-made traditions. Politics, Christianity, you understand? Islam, okay? Democracy, 50-50, okay? Women can be men, men can be women. Women can be over the man, you understand? Children can be disrespectful, you understand? All of that, all of that, that's how we are spoiled in this country. That's how we are spoiled. Wherever the 12 tribes of Israel we scattered, we are spoiled. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. We have grown out broken systems. Systems that can hold no water. Okay? So now we trust in oppression. Everything that is set up in this society is not for us. It's against us. It's to destroy us. Give me John 14, verse 8. This is what Christ said. Watch this. John chapter 14, verse 30. Come on. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. Mm -hmm. For the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. You see what Christ is saying? He says, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. Christ is letting us know, listen, I'm going back to my father. Okay? He says, for the prince of this world cometh. Meaning, after I'm gone, another nation is going to be ruling over you. And guess what? He is talking about during the time of Rome, which Rome, Rome was ruling over us. But Generations later, Rome, the extension of Rome, which is America, is ruling over us. What is Christ saying? He says, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. Meaning everything that this man is going to set up in this earth is going to be completely against the Lord. That's what he's telling you right there. Christ is telling you right there. Vain deceit and not after Christ. So the apostle Paul was quoting Christ right here in John 14 with this. Okay, that's what it was saying right there. Now go back to Jeremiah chapter 2. Read verse 13 again. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Right? For my people have committed two evils. Mm -hmm. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Go ahead. And hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. The broken cisterns is what? Politics is a broken system. Democracy is a broken system. Christianity is a broken system because Christianity teaches white supremacy. It teaches the black man and the black woman to hate themselves because they teach that Jesus is white. They teach us God is white. They teach that the angels are white, which is nowhere in the Holy Bible. So you understand? That's, that's why Christianity is a broken system. It cannot benefit us. It never does. It never has. It never will. You understand? Because Christianity teaches what? Christianity is a slave doctrine. Christianity is a slave education. Understand that. Okay? Now watch this. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 30. Okay? Isaiah chapter 30. I'm trying to show you what the Lord is saying. He says, we used out broken system. Meaning we left the fountain of living water. We went somewhere else to seek understanding, which is not understanding at all. We went somewhere else to seek comfort which we are not comforted at all when we go to these places other than the word of God. Now read it. Isaiah chapter 30, read verse 12. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. 
Go ahead. Wherefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because he despised his word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stayed thereon. You see what the Bible is saying? The Lord is saying because he despised his word. Because as a people, the most that God says, our people, they hate this book. They hate the Bible. They love why Jesus with all their heart, which is not in the Bible, is idolatry. That's why when we go and teach on the seats, you know what happens? Our people, they ask questions. When we give them the answers according to the Bible, they leave or they argue. You know why they argue? Because once we read it out of the Bible, you cannot deny it. You cannot fight it. And if you do, you'll always remember that, by the way, the answers I'm looking for, the brothers on the seat, they gave me the answers. I just have to read for myself. It's right there written in black and white. Because what does that mean? That means they have to change. The reason why our people, they fight the word of God is because the word of God is about change. And our people don't want to change. They like to complain, but they don't want to change. You understand? They like to complain, and they hate to explain they don't want to change. That's the problem with our people. That's why they hate the Bible. That's why they're so rebellious against this book. They are not, you notice, our people are not rebellious against Julius Malema's um, EFF manifesto. I've never seen nobody rebel against them. I've never seen nobody rebel against the manifesto yeah, Action SA. I've never seen that. Our people only rebel against what's written in this book. Understand that. Because the Bible is a book of law and order. And as a people, we hate law and order. That's why there's disorder in our community. Because there's no law. When we bring the law, that means there must be order. And our people don't like that. They like chaos. Now read that verse again, verse, verse 12. Come on. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Read. Wherefore, that says the Holy One of Israel, Go ahead. because he despised his word and trust in oppression. And is that the Lord says we trust in oppression. What is the oppression? The broken system. What is that? Politics and religion. Because politics and religion is all the same thing. Democracy and Christianity is all the same thing. It's two sides of the same demonic coin. It's the same thing. Because in Christianity, they teach you come as you are. You don't have to change nothing about yourself. You come as a whole, you live as a whole. You come as a thief, you live as a thief. That's what they teach. In demo democracy and politics, you don't have to do nothing. You just have to avoid into a door. That's it. You understand? You don't have to do nothing. They, that's why they tell you, no, you must vote. And when things don't go well in your community, they say, no, but you didn't vote for the right party or you didn't vote. You notice that in politics, the, people, the politicians, they never actually get their hands dirty. They put the honors on the people. They say, listen, you don't want, you want things to change, you must vote. So what are you doing? Nothing. You, you see the point? Our people, listen, our people have been deceived, but they still don't see the deception because why? They hate the bind. So now their eyes are closed. They cannot see what's going on. Okay? Now watch this. Now we dealt with, the Lord is teaching us that the reason why now we forsook the fountain of wisdom, now we, we wound out broken systems is because of what? Worshipping of idols. We've changed the God of heaven and earth. We went after other gods that cannot profit us at all. They never have, they never will. Now watch this. Give me Exodus chapter 9. Because we're still dealing with, we're still observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's a seven-day celebration. So I'm still going to deal with the plague of the, the idols that we were worshipping in Egypt. So we understand what's going on this day. Give me that in Exodus chapter 9. Okay? Exodus 9, read verse 8. Let's start there. Watch this. This, this right here is the sixth plague. Okay? The sixth plague. Read that. Exodus chapter 9 verse 8. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, mm -hmm. and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. So now the Lord is using Moses to say, Listen, this is how I'm going to judge the Egyptians. Okay? You want to sprinkle a handful of, fan, of ashes on of the furnace. You understand? And you must sprinkle it toward heaven. What's going to happen? Read. Then it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt mm -hmm. and shall be a boil breaking forth with blaze upon men. 
and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. So now the judgment was what? The judgment was going to be boils that are going to be breaking and is going to be what? Blames upon men and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. So the most that God was going to give them what? Boils and blames. That's bruises upon the skin and all that to make your face and your skin, your whole skin, your whole body look ugly. So the Lord says, I'm going to bring that, I'm going to bring that place because the Egyptians, they worship the goddess of health and beauty called Ketesh. Ketesh is the goddess of health and beauty. Okay, watch this. Our people, as a, our people was worshiping the, the goddess of health and beauty. So the Lord said, okay, you believe that this, this woman is the one that protects you. Okay, let me, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay, watch this. Let me share my screen real quick so you can see. Right there. Uh, you brothers and sisters, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. This right here is the goddess of health and beauty, Ketesh. Okay. They, they believe that this woman is the one that's responsible for the beauty of the women in, of the women in Egypt and so forth. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to destroy your, your so-called beauty because they were not beautiful at all, but so they believe. I'm going to destroy, I'm going I'm to make, I'm going to show you that the only man, the only person that's responsible for beauty on this earth is the Lord. So I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to make sure that I plague you with blains and boils upon your skin. Guess what? That goddess of health and beauty, so you believe that she's going to be the one that's responsible for that. Let her defend you. Let's see if she's going to present the plague that is coming upon you. That didn't happen. They could not stop that. Okay. That's her right there. You see the goddess of health and beauty. She's naked. I'm going to go into that. You want to see this day. You see that? This DD is there. Because remember our people in Egypt, we was worshipping this. Okay. We were worshipping this thing in Egypt. You see that? The Egyptian goddess Kitesh. You see how she's dressed? The breasts are out. That's why our sisters today, they dress so promiscuously. They worship the goddess of, of health and beauty, Kitesh, an Egyptian god, goddess. Yeah, Isis. It all goes back to Isis. Semiramis. It all goes back to that. Inanna, the queen of heaven. Okay? You brothers and sisters, do you see that? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, all oh, praise to the Lord. All oh, praise. So now, now read that verse again. That's nine. Exodus chapter nine, verse nine. Read it. Exodus chapter nine, verse nine. Go ahead. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with plains upon men and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Read. Right? And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with blaze upon man and upon beast. You see that thing? The Lord plagued them with what was boil, okay? And blame. Go ahead. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of their boils. You see that thing? But the magicians couldn't, listen, they could not prevent this thing. They said they could not stand before Moses. Because of the boil, because they also were affected by them. Go ahead. For the boil was upon the magicians mm. and upon all the Egyptians. You see that thing? Even the, the magicians themselves, today they call them the Sangomas and all that. Guess what? Even they had boils and blains upon their skin. They couldn't prevent that. You understand? Because Kitesh could not prevent it. That's what the Lord was, was, was showing the Egyptians that. He's the only one that has the power. But not only that, he was also showing our, our fathers and mothers during the time of Egypt that, listen, these are no gods. These are no gods. These, these Egyptians, they have no power. The power that they have is because the Lord is the one that made them powerful. It's not because of their, their sword clever. No, no. It's because the Most High allowed them to rule. You understand? To be the top nation on earth during their time. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. Let's see. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Read that verse again, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. He says, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Moses is prophesying here. This is what's going to happen to you, Israelites, in the last days if you break these laws. That's exactly what happened. He says, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, so let's get the definition of what Egypt means. He says, the Lord will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Let's see what Egypt is, synony is synonymous for. Okay, read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see that thing? Out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means the house of bondage, the house of slavery. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Read verse 68 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. The Lord will bring you into slavery again. Will bring you into the house of bondage again. But this time, you're not going to walk like we walked when we went to Egypt. This time, we're going to travel by ship cargo slave ships that goes to the transatlantic slave trade that goes to the sub-Sahara slave trade the Silk Road slave trade when the Arabs when the when the, 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 the Chinese were selling us with the with, with working together with the East Indians and Arabs you understand the transatlantic slave trade when the Arabs and the Hamites Nilotic Hamites they sold us to the white men North Central and South you understand at the decree of Queen Isabella before that, uh, Pope Nicholas V, okay, with his dumb diversity, the decree to sell our forefathers and foremothers into slavery, okay? So that's what the Lord is saying. He says, you're going to go into slavery. This time, we're going to travel by ship. You're going to be transported all over the world. Okay, go ahead. By the way, if I speak unto thee, thou yes. shalt see no more again. We're not going to see our homeland again. That's what he's saying. Because right now, we are not in our homeland. We are in South Africa, calling ourselves Bantus and whatnot. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. When you so get off the man... slave ship, hold on. When you get off the slave ship, that's why it says, and there, once you get off the slave ship, you are going to be sold to your enemies. Okay, go ahead. Okay, read the verse again, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So bondmen is slave men, bond women, slave women. So both men and women, our fathers and mothers, is that what we were so they were sold into slavery. We would be sold into slavery. To these other nations so the nations can what can make us work for free and may and also induct our children into the slavery the slavery system to continue making them money when they don't pay us nothing okay so that's what the lord is saying he says you're going to go into slavery but watch this once we get there to these foreign lands once we get to south africa we get to ghana guinea nigeria namibia okay madagascar mozambique America, North, Central, and South, Japan, India, Russia, so on and so forth. Watch this. What are we going to do? Give me to Tommy for the straight up. Once we arrive in these lands, what's going to happen? Watch this. You tell me chapter 4, verse 27. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Read. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, mm -hmm. and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whither the Lord shall lead you. So now the Lord is saying he's gonna he's talking, he's telling Moses to tell us that 
He's going to scatter us. Um, he's going to scatter us among the nations. We will be scattered among all nations on earth. He says, and he shall be less few in number among his heathen, meaning the other nation, whether the Lord shall lead you, because the Lord will deliver us over there. That's why it says few in number, meaning the nations are going to kill us, they're going to slaughter us, they're going to murder and kill and rape and destroy our people. That's why it says less few in number. Okay, whether the Lord shall lead you. Go ahead. And then you shall serve God. You see what the work of men's hands. Hold on. And then, once the Lord scatter you via slave ships, colonization and forced migration, is that there you shall serve God. You're going to serve other gods other than the, the God of heaven and earth. Okay, go ahead. And there you shall serve God's, the work of men's hands, mm -hmm. wood and stone. You see that thing? Wood and stone. Christianity and Islam. Because Christianity is the world's largest religion followed by Islam. Because many of our people are today, they are said they are Muslims. Okay? Go ahead. Following Christianity. Read. Which neither see nor hear, mm -hmm. nor eat nor smell. Because these are dumb idols. Like we read in Habakkuk 2.18. These are dumb idols. Like we read in Wisdom of Solomon 15 verse 5 down. These are dumb idols which have no breath. The Lord says, once you get to those lands, these nations that will enslave you, they're going to teach you to worship their God, their idols, and to follow their customs and traditions and ways. You're going to forget who you are. You're going to forget your culture. You're going to forget your laws. And you're going to forget where you come from. More important, you're going to forget who your God is. That's what the Lord is. This is prophecy. And guess what? It happened. Just as the Lord said it was going to happen, that's exactly how it took place. Understand that. Now watch this. Um, understand, remember, what Moses is explaining to us here, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, because this is very important for you men and women to understand. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. The Lord will bring you into Egypt again. Egypt, this Egypt is not the Egypt of the of Pharaoh. It's not the Egypt that, that is um, that, that where we were there for 400 years with the different Pharaohs and different dynasties, dynasties that were in. No, no, this is spiritual Egypt. It's not the physical Egypt that we were in, it's the spiritual Egypt. You understand? Spiritual, this is spiritual Egypt right here. That's why it says. The Lord will bring you into Egypt again. Because the first time when we were, we walked. This spiritual Egypt, we we're going to travel by ship, by cargo slave ships. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Get that in 2nd Ezra 15, verse 11. 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 11. Watch this. Now, Ezra, this is during the time of pleasure. Okay? It's law, it's thousands of years later after the Egyptian slavery. Right here. Now watch this. Second Ezra 15, verse 11. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 11. Go ahead. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm mm -hmm. and smite Egypt with place as before. Mm -hmm. And will destroy all the land thereof. You see what the you see what the Lord is saying? He says, and I will bring them with a mighty hand. He's talking about the Israelites. This is future prophecy. The Lord says in spiritual Egypt, where you're gonna where you have traveled by ship, as we read in the book of Deuteronomy, it says what? It says, and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So, what is the Lord telling us here? He's telling us that this is not the Egypt that we're reading about, uh, that we were that we're reading about in Genesis 15, verse 18. No, this is spiritual Egypt. The Lord says he's going to smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Right now, Egypt is being plagued. Spiritual Egypt is being plagued with, uh, is being plagued with plagues as before. The coronavirus, that's a plague. You understand? That is a plague right there. That's one of the plagues that the Lord is going to bring in these last days. These are technological plagues that are happening right now. You understand? They said the Wuhan had the Wuhan virus. You understand that the, that was developed in a lab in China, but America is the one that funded that mess. 
So where does it come from? America is the one that's responsible for this pandemic. Okay? Understand that. But guess what? The Lord is using them to do these things because why? The scriptures must be fulfilled. Understand that. Read that again, verse 11. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 11. Go ahead. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm mm -hmm. and smite each plagues as before Great. and will destroy all the land thereof. So the Lord is letting us know that in this spiritual Egypt, guess what? There's going to be more plagues that are going to come upon this place. You understand? First and foremost, America and the land where the Israelites are scattered, there's going to be plagues. There's now the plagues are going to affect the whole earth. Not just what was going on in Egypt back then, but the plagues now in spiritual Egypt, they're going to affect the whole earth. Okay? So this is not over. It, this is just, the, these are baby steps. The corona that you see right now, these are just baby steps. More plagues are coming. More diseases are coming. Why? Because the scripture says there's going to be more plagues that are going to come upon this earth because the scriptures must be fulfilled. Go ahead. Egypt shall mourn. Egypt shall mourn, read. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague. Mm -hmm. and punishment that God shall bring upon it. You see that thing? It says the foundation of Egypt, meaning their riches, their empires, is that they are going to be what? They are going to be smitten with plagues and punishment that God shall bring upon it. So these plagues that you are seeing, these are punishments from the most high. It's not just diseases that are going to come, but it's famines that are going to come. There's going to be famine. That's why now when you look at the price of diesel, diesel is going up. Because I was talking to one Iromite at work, he said diesel is that, he says they are projecting that it's going to go up by 25 bucks or something. So that's crazy. Because diesel is responsible for a lot of stuff. You understand? Important export. These ships that are traveling, that are doing important export, they are not going to afford to travel across seas. So that means there's going to be food shortages. Understand that? There's going to be food shortages. Already there's food shortages right now. Do you understand? The things are starting to get expensive. But right now, it has not gotten to a point, that point yet. Things are still a little bit cheap also, but it's going to get to a point where things are going to be more expensive. You understand? The interest rates are going to go high. You understand? The food is going to be, uh, there's going to be shortage of food. You understand? That's coming. That's also part of the place. So you sisters and brothers, don't relate up to me. That's why we are now, we are what? We need to go back again and stock up like we've been doing. We need to stock up food. We need to stock up non-perishable stuff and put them in our houses because we must prepare for the famine that's coming. Okay, go ahead. They that till the ground shall mourn mm -hmm. for their seeds shall fade through the blasting and hail mm -hmm. and with a fearful constellation. A fearful constellation that's missile, that's war. And that's what's going on right now. The thing that is happening in Ukraine, I mean, that's a smaller war. But that's part of what, that's part of the problem. These things must come to pass. They must happen. You understand? Before we are delivered out of this captivity. Understand that. But the Lord is saying, we are in spiritual Egypt. So what we read in second Ezra is what Moses was explaining. Now get that in Revelation 11 verse 8 to explain the spiritual Egypt. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, mm -hmm. which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. Go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. You see that thing? It says their dead bodies. Remember in Baruch 3, verse 10, it says, What? It says we are defiled with the dead. We are spiritually dead. It says their dead bodies shall lie in the seats of the great city. That great city is talking about first and foremost, America. America is the greatest city on earth, which spiritually is called Sodom. So America is called is spiritual Sodom and is spiritual Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And guess what? Hmm, get that in Proverbs 21, 16 real quick, so I can explain is when it says they are dead bodies. Why does it say our dead bodies. What does that mean? Our dead bodies. 
What does that mean? Read that. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see that thing? When we, we wandered out of the way of understanding, that's when we went to idolatry. We hewn out broken systems that could not hold no water. We forsaken the fountain of the fountain of wisdom, which is God's law. Then that's when we went out of the way of understanding. And now, as the Lord is saying, the 12 tribes of Israel, they are in the congregation of the day. The Christianity is a congregation of the day. Islam, politics, democracy, that's all the congregation of the day. Because our people in there, they are spiritually dead and gone. Okay? That's what the Lord is saying. So go back to Revelation 11, verse 8. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, mm -hmm. where also our Lord was crucified. So our spiritually, our spiritually dead bodies, because we are not physically dead, but spiritually dead. We are we keep walking. It says, shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is which spiritually is called Sodom because they practice homosexuality, LGBTQI, whatever, mm -hmm. Egypt, because guess what? They enslaved our people. They are enslaved, they enslaved us. They are still enslaving us. That's why it says spiritually is called Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified because the teachings of Christ were crucified by the nations that took the east of the white man, the so-called white man that is ruling over us. So Christ's image was destroyed because he gave us a white image, which is not in the Bible. You understand? His teaching was also crucified because they said, no, Christ died for everyone. Christ is coming to save everyone. That's not in the Bible. So that's how his image, his teaching was also crucified. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. We are in spiritual Egypt. And guess what? In spiritual Egypt, the Lord said, what did Moses say? He says, they shall save God, wood and stone. Watch this. Give me that in Romans, okay? Romans 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. The Lord said through Moses that we're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. Watch this. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. Stop right there. Be not. That's a commandment. Be not. Meaning don't be conformed to this world. What does it mean to conform? Let's see. Conform. It says, be not conformed to this world, the Lord is saying. Okay. Watch this. Let me get let, let me share my screen so you can see what it is to conform. The Lord is says, be not conformed to this world. Okay. Let me share my screen. Give me one second. Yes, read that. Conform. The definition of conform. You can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. The definition of conform. Read the second definition right there. The definition of conform. Of a person behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. You see that thing? It says of a person behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. When it says socially acceptable, that goes into what? That goes into um, the de how the definition of beauty, how the beauty is defined. You must comply with that. You must behave according to the standards of beauty that the world has set. You must be, uh, behave according to that. When you question the standard of beauty that the, the world has set up, guess what? They, 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 they have a thing, but, but what do they call it? Cancel culture. They said they will cancel it. I guess that's what they call it, right? Cancel culture now. Yes, sir. When you say something that does not agree with them, you speak against homosexuality, homosexual, Barry, you, 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 that hate speech and all that, they cancel you. Look what they did to Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. You understand? So they wanted to cancel him as well. So now let's read the, the synonyms. Read it. Synonyms. Adapt. Mm hmm Adjust. Adjust. Now watch this. Read that. Fit in. Fit in. You when you conform, you must fit in. That means everything about you, you must read, you must let it go. You must forget everything about yourself 
and fit into that culture that is socially acceptable. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Read. Comply. Comply. Okay. Read that. Toe the line. Toe the line. According to socially acceptable conventions or standards. Okay. Read that. Play by the rules. Play by their rules, okay, with? Yield. Yield. Hmm. Go ahead. Submit. Submit to a socially acceptable convention or standard. With? Go with the flow. Go with the flow. You see that thing? So when we don't conform, guess what? They, what they call? They call us what? We are rebels. Because we don't conform to socially acceptable conventions or standards that is set up or defined by the world, which is completely against the most High God and his son and his people, which is at the state. You, you understand that? That's what the Lord is saying. Con be not conformed to this world. Don't conform to it. Okay. Now watch this. Read that, read that definition right there. The third one. The definition of conform. Mm -hmm. Be similar in form or type. You see that? Agree. You see that? Be similar in form or type. Meaning your form must change. The, the, your type must change. That's why today they what? They, they condone homosexuality, transgender, sex change. You understand? Dress code men. Men can put on dresses now. Women can dress like men. Everything is just out, out of order. It's like the whole world is on now. That's what's going on right now. Okay? That's what's happening. The whole world is on now. Understand that. Okay? Now, watch this. Read that verse again. Romans 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And be not conformed to this world. Read. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the Apostle Paul is giving us, is, is telling us what not to do. Not only that, but he's telling us what we must do. Don't conform, but transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. Meaning be born again. Keep God's commandments. Understand that you are an Israelite, you are a Jew. You must return back to this book and do what he says. As an Israel, as a Jew. Not as in song. Not as Mufeirun, Musotu, Mufor. The Lord will not accept you. You must acknowledge that you are an, an Israelite according to the Bible. And you must do keep the laws of God. Then the Lord will accept you. If you don't come, you do come and say, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Jehovah's Wickedness, I'm a non denominational That's not what the Lord is looking for. The Lord is looking for Israelites. You understand? The children of the captivity to repent and to return back to their God-given name and to keep the law that God gave unto them. That's how the only way the Lord will accept you. If you come some other way, the Lord will reject you. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 3.31. Because in the land of our captivity, we will, the most High like God says, we will conform to their ways. That's why now we are rejecting those ways by keeping God's commandments. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor mm -hmm. and choose none of his ways. That's a commandment right there. He says, Envy thou not the oppressor. Don't envy the oppressor because envy, what is that? Envy will consume you. Watch this. The Lord says, Don't envy your oppressor. The people that have oppressed us, the people that have oppressed us, that are oppressing us, everything we know about ourselves, they taught us, not what God says. They teach the opposite to what God said about us. You understand? So they define how you look at yourself. I'm dealing with the sisters now. You sisters, because you, a lot of our sisters, they rebellious against the laws of God. We meet a lot of them on the street. They don't want to hear this book. But those sisters that want to repent or praise the law. But what I'm showing you is, the most that God says, envy thou not the oppressor. Don't envy the oppressor and choose none of the ways of the oppressor. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 23. I'm going to show you what envy does. This is what envy does. Okay, the spirit of envy. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. 
Neither will I go with consuming envy. Consuming envy. Envy will consume you. Envy will make you destroy your own self. Envy will make you make permanent decision on a temporary motion. That's what envy will do. Let me say that again in case I start. Envy will make you make permanent decisions on a temporary motion. That's why today you see our sister Mukani Bao. She's made a permanent decision on a temporary motion because now she's bleached her skin. Her skin can no longer be malin. She's no longer melanated. You understand? She does not have melanin now because she decided to bleach her skin to, re to remove the melanin based on a temporary motion. No, I feel like this, I feel like this. But that's just a temporary motion. You understand? Boom shows up. The hair's all rest in peace. But guess what? He, she also, she did the same thing. You understand? She made a permanent decision to bleach her skin. These plastic surgeries that they do. You understand? These fake ups that they put on their clothes, on their skin and all that. These fake eyelashes called umbrella. Guess what? That's envy. Envy will do that to you because you envy your oppressor. Read the verse again, verse 23. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Read. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You see that thing? Only fools will do this stuff. Fools, because you worship idols, the Lord says, as a fool, you, have, you will have no fellowship with wisdom because you are consumed with envy of your oppressor. So much so that you're willing to destroy your own beauty that God gave to you to look like your oppressor. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor, mm -hmm. and choose none of his ways. So the ways of the oppressor is what? Politics, religion, democracy, Christianity, okay? What beauty looks like. That's all that, all of that, that's the way of the oppressor. The Lord says, don't choose any of the oppressors. Guess what? In captivity, in spiritual Egypt, that's what we will do. That's what the Lord says. As a nation, we will do those things as a people. Because in Egypt, our forefathers and foremothers, they were worshipping Kitesh, the goddess of health and beauty. You think they are not doing the same thing today? Of course they are. Look at our sisters. I'm dealing with the sisters today. Look at what our sisters are doing to themselves in the name of beauty. And it's not beauty, it's vain beauty because the beauty that they call beauty, that's not the beauty that the Lord gave to them. It, that's why it's called vain beauty. It's not the original, it's not the authentic one, it's fake beauty, vain beauty. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Maccabees 4, 15. 2 Maccabees in the Apocrypha. Chapter 4, verse 15. Watch this. 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 15. Go ahead. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, mm -hmm. but liking the glory of the Christians best of all. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, because you don't want to keep God's commandment, you what? You chasing after vain beauty. Guess what? You're not going to set, you're not going to follow after the footsteps of your fathers and mothers. The, those that kept the commandments in the Bible. You want to follow after what? But he says what? But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Who's the Grecian? The white man. The Lord says, our people, our sisters, because I'm dealing with you today, sisters, he says, you're going to like the glory of the Grecians best of all. Meaning, you will prefer how your oppressor tells you what beauty looks like. You prefer them tell you. You prefer them defining what beauty looks like. You understand? And you're going to conform to that socially acceptable standard that is not of the Lord. Okay? That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. By reason whereof so calamity came upon them. So calamity came upon them. What was the so calamity? Captivity, slavery. You understand? When they took our history, our, our culture, they kicked us off our land. That's so calamity. Not only that, they define what you look like. They tell you how you must love yourself when God defines how you must love yourself. You understand? That's so calamity. Okay? It's to our demise, loving these nations, wanting to be like them. Go ahead. 
for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. These are our enemies and avengers, right? Whose custom they followed for earnestly. You see that thing? So now the Lord is saying, because we don't want to follow the customs, the ways of our forefathers, guess what he says? Now we prepare the glory of the Christians, best of all, the glory of the white man. You understand? It says what? Whose custom they followed so earnestly, meaning in every which way we followed them, right? And unto whom they desired to be like in all things. You see what the Bible is saying? It says unto whom? Unto the Christians. It says unto the white man whom we desire to be like in all things. That's why our people, when we read the Bible and show them, especially the sisters, they don't want to let the weed go. Sister, let the weed go. You understand? If as you are coming into this to be born again, drop the weed, sister. Put the weed in the garbage. You understand? How long are you going to stop? When are you going to stop making money for these uh, Chinese? When are you going to stop making money for these Arabs when you go there to buy weed? You understand? Because you're purchasing a weed. You are showing, you are, you are teaching these nations that you really hate yourself that much that you willing to come here to our store to buy fake hair. Hmm? It's time to love yourself. It's time to love yourself like the most that God loves you. It's time to love that beautiful Afro sister. It's time to love that beautiful Afro hair that the Lord gave you. That beautiful cropped hair, which is on the hair and on the head of the heavenly father. You must love it. Okay. That's what the that's what the most high God wants us, wants you sisters to do. And we are here to guide you, to teach you just that the way that it was from the beginning. We're gonna teach you, we're gonna teach you God's commandments. God's law to love yourself, okay? And stop making these damn Arabs who hate you, these damn Chinese who hate your people, you're going to stop making them money. Understand that, okay? Read again, verse 16. Second Maccabees chapter 4, verse 16. Read. By reason whereof, so calamity came upon them. Come on. But they had them to be their enemies and avengers, mm -hmm. whose custom they followed so earnestly and unto whom they desire to be like in all things. You see that thing? Now our sisters, they desire to be like these other nations in all things, particularly the white men. You understand? And because of that, that's why these nations, they continue to, to abuse and misuse our sisters. But when we come with the Bible, our sisters, they reject that. Them days are over. The prophets are back. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 because the beauty, the so-called beauty that you are chasing, that's vain beauty. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Read it. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. And what? And beauty is vain. It says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Favor goes into bride. Favor, favor that has an ulterior motive. It's called a bride. That's why it says favor is deceitful. Go ahead. And what? And beauty is vain. Vain beauty. And beauty is vain because you're not going to look like, like you're 21 year old or 24 year old forever. You're going to grow older. You're going to start to age. When you age, things start to deform and all that. They don't look the same way they did. Yes, so that's why it says beauty is vain. Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But a woman that feared the Lord, she's going to be praised because you fear the Lord, that goes forever. You fear God's laws, that goes forever. So, but our sisters, they are taught or any condition to put emphasis on their look. We're not saying, sisters, you can't look good. No, but you're putting so much emphasis on that, guess what? You don't get your mind right. You don't get your spirit right. So you just look like this beautiful monster. Okay. You look like a beautiful monster. The most High God says, you must do both. The first priority must, when you, you, the inner man starts to change, we're going to see it on the outside as well. Understand that thing. Read that thing again, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Right? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Let me show you the favor that is deceitful. Give me Exodus 23, read verse 8. Exodus 23, verse 8. The favor that is deceitful. What is the favor that is given to our sisters today? 
the favor that is given to us, this, what is the medium of, of, um, of delivery? Social media, the internet, you understand? TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and all that. Only fans. That's the medium of, of communication, particularly they target our system. Mark Zuckerberg didn't create Facebook because they love you. The owner of TikTok they didn't create that because they love you. They didn't create Twitter because they love you. No, no, no. They designed that thing to destroy our people. These are weapons of mass confusion. You understand? Now read that. Exodus 23 verse 8. Exodus chapter 23 verse 8. Read. And thou shalt take no gift. Mm -hmm. For the gift blindeth the wise and perverted the words of the righteous. You see that thing? He says, thou shalt take no gift because the gift blinded the, uh, the wise and perverted the words of the righteous. Now, watch what the Lord is saying right here. The most that God is saying, listen, um, thou shalt take no gift because the gift blinded the wise. Now, hmm. give me the book of Psalm 64 verse 6. Let me show you the gift, the gift that destroyed the heart, okay? The gift that will blind the mind. Watch this. Get that in Psalm 64 verse 6. Let me show you what the nation, the white man, the so-called white man, what he has done in these last days to destroy the mind of the black woman. Okay? Watch this. Read it. Psalm 64 verse 6. Psalm chapter 64 verse 6. Come on. They search out iniquities. They do what? They search out iniquities. The most that God says, this white man, this so-called white man, he searches out iniquity. Iniquity is sin. I Meaning he goes out of his way to go and dig up the, 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 the idols of the past, of Egypt, of Assyria, of Persia, you understand, of Babylon. All those idols that we used to worship that destroy the children of Israel, Let's say, in, 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 for instance, in Egypt, he digs them up. For instance, Kitesh, the goddess of health and beauty. That's why today you've got plastic surgery, skin bleaching, umbrellas, uh, weaves, and all that. Yes, that's what he, he searches out these things. Okay, read again, verse 6. Psalm chapter 64, verse 6. Go ahead. They search out iniquities. Mm -hmm. They accomplish a diligent search. They accomplish a diligent search because they, they make it they thorough research. That's why they hire archaeologists and all that to dig up stuff. They just pay them to think, to go and investigate. That's why they've got think tanks. Guess what? The CSIR in Mzanzi, that's a think tank. In case you didn't know. The CSIR is a think tank. Is disguised like no, the technology. Mm, that's a think tank designed to do because that's why it's, it's a parastata, meaning part government, part private. There's scientists over there, their engineer, their job is they are paid to just think and do research on how to what how to destroy black people. But our people don't believe that though. Okay, read that verse again, verse six. Psalm chapter 64, verse 6. Read. They search out iniquities. Mm -hmm. They accomplish a diligent search. They accomplish a diligent search, right? Both the inward thoughts of every one of them and the heart is deep. You see what the Bible is saying? Is that their inward thought of every one of them and their heart is deep. I mean, they think long term. They think 10 years, 50 years, 100 years in the future. Meaning if we do this now, is gonna the impact of it will be felt hundred years from now. That's how they plan things. That's how they do things. Okay, that's what the Most High God is saying. So that's why they are able to go back all the way back from the past to the past to dig up evil to bring it here in the in the kingdom that they are ruling in. That's what they do. That's what the Most High God is saying right there. That's why today you've got they've got technological advancements and all of that. Guess what? Now it's just on a technological scale. Back then it was on a more natural scale. Now it's technological. That's why this white man signs. That's a big thing for him. Because if you sign, it's just witchcraft. Give me that in first Timothy 6 verse 20. First Timothy 
chapter 6, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Come on. Av avoiding profane and vain babblings mm -hmm. and oppositions of science, falsely so called. And what now? And oppositions of science, falsely so called. And oppositions of science, falsely so called. So the opposition of science, this, this white man, his science opposes the most I call. And particularly, what are we talking about? Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 2.21. Um, you know what? No, no, no. Go back. Go back to Psalm 31 verse 30. I want to deal with that beauty part. Okay. We dealt with the favor that is deceitful because what is the favor that is deceitful? The social media platforms. The white man is using social media platforms, you understand, to deceive the black woman. So she thinks that these plus social media platforms, they, are, they, design, they design them because they love them. No, they don't love you. They, are, they want you to embarrass yourself in, in, in public for the whole world to see, to disgrace your nation. That's why now TikTok and all that is filled with black women just shaking their behind, filled with black women half naked, filled with black women naked, filled with black women teaching young women, young girls how to twerk, how to be a drag queen, hmm? how to be a hoe, how to get money, how to use what's between your knees. That's what's going on this day. You understand? That's why, that, that's the favor that is deceitful. That right there, that's the favor that's deceitful. Okay? Watch this. You hold that. Give me first Ezra 5.72. Let's just touch on that. Because I'm going to show you that these TikTok that are created, they are not created for our benefit. They are created to deceive our sisters, especially them. Okay? Because our sisters, without the men, without the laws of God, without men over you, you are vulnerable. Don't, don't let the media fool you say, no, you don't need no man. That's a lie. That is why they, 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 they target the black woman. They know the black man is not dead. That's why they are easily deceived by the media. But, you know, it's a new day. Give me that yeah. in first Ezra. Chapter 5, read verse 72. What's this? First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 72. Go ahead. But the heathen of the land laying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. So the heathen of the land, the heathen of the land is the other nation. The other nation's job is to, what, is to stop us from building our people up, from rebuilding our nation, our community. You understand? To bring, the, to, to bring honor and structure and order in our nation. The nations don't want that. That's why they use social media as a distraction. Social media pillar is destructive. You ever see people, they are on TikTok, three hours go by, four hours go by, you're on TikTok. That's witchcraft. You understand? That's why now kids now, they're walking around very tablet. Where they, what are these? They are on TikTok. They are on Facebook. Listen, me, I don't operate like that. Mm -mm. Because I know what's on TV is just garbage and e. Okay? But the nations are using the media to destroy from the older ones to the younger ones in our nation. Read the 73. Come on. And by their secret plots. They are what now? And by their secret plots. Their secret plot. The secret plot is meaning what? The nations sit together in behind closed doors. They are planning and plotting how to destroy the black woman and the black man. Go ahead. And popular persuasions and commotions. And commotions. The popular persuasion goes into the media, social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. That's the popular persuasion today. And commotion. Commotion is the court of public opinion. That's what they call it. The court of public opinion where the public is the one that decides how a matter, how a matter is handled. So the commotion is you go against the LGBT, you tell the black woman to, to throw the weed in the bin, guess what? Many black women are going to attack. We don't give a damn about that. We're going to teach the truth because we care about our sisters. We care about our young girls. We are tired of seeing our young girls, 13 year old who are very mean scared. 14 year old, they are wearing a bum short because they've been taught by the women around them that that's how you, that's how you show your value. Your value is you showing your cleavage. Your value is when you wearing tight things. No, that's not your value, sister. You've been taught wrong. It's time to repent. 
Okay, go ahead. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. You see that thing? So when they come, the secret plot is what? Yes, the think tank. That's the secret plot. And popular persuasions, commotion, that's the media and the court of public, the court of public opinion. You understand? It says these instruments, they are used to do what to hinder our building, to, to, to stop us from building our nation, to stop us from pushing the truth out there so our people can learn and receive the truth, so they can repent and start to love themselves and look at themselves as God's chosen people. You understand? So they use that. Now watch this. Give me the book of uh, First Maccabees, okay, chapter seven, because I'm going to show you um, with the popular persuasion. This is what they are using them for. No, Second Maccabees seven, verse thirty-one. I'm going to show you the popular persuasion. They use the popular persuasion to do this right here. Watch this, because a lot of the times is that our peers, especially our sisters, they think that these social media platforms they are designed to favor them. No, that's deceitful favor. That's the favor that is deceitful. It's designed to destroy you and your girl and your, 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 your their daughters. Because these young daughters, they look up to these older sisters for guidance and they follow your example. If you now, when you dress like a whore, you dress promiscuously, you are a mini skirt, you show your cleavage, you put in a weave, long fake lashes and all that. What do you think these young girls are going to do? They're going to do the same thing. Okay? So we're trying to stop that with the word of God. Watch this. Second Maccabees 7, verse 31. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 31. Read. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, Great. shall not escape the hands of God. So now, the, who's, who's been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews? The white man with his media. Because he's with me, has given a mouth to speak great words against the children of Israel. And against God. That's why it says they've been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. They, they are the authors of mischief against us. So the main platform they use is the news, the social media platform. All these news outlets, who ES, ENCH, that, that, that right there, that's the platform they use to author mischief against us. TikTok. When you look at TikTok, young girls, older sisters, they are shaking their bums, they are twerking, but they don't know how to cook. You understand? Something simple as that. They cannot clean the house. They wear, they, they sleep on daily, daily sheets every day and so forth. They don't know how to wash their underwear. They don't even know how to do that. But guess what? They are twerking on TikTok. That, those platforms, they are designed to offer mischief against us, particularly our sisters. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to Proverbs 31 verse 39. Read that. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Read. Favor is deceitful uh -huh. and beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. Vain beauty. That's for nice class. Beauty is vain. I'm going to show you how vain beauty is. The beauty that our sisters today have is not the real beauty. It's not authentic. It's vain beauty. It's fake. Watch this. Jeremiah 2, 21. Jeremiah 2, verse 21. Watch what the Lord said here. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Read. Right. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, mm -hmm. holding the right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? You see what the Lord is saying? He says, how did you what now? How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? The Lord says he made us a noble vine, holy a right seed. But he says because of vain beauty, because we don't keep God's commandment, guess what? He says now we have become what? We have become this, with this plant, the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto him. The Lord says he cannot recognize us. He made us glorious above all nations on earth. Now the Lord says, I cannot even recognize you. You understand? Watch this. I'm going to show you something. The definition of the word um, degenerate. Okay? Watch this. Read that. 
the definition of degenerate. I want you to read that right there. Definition of degenerate, mm -hmm. adjective. Having lost the physical, mental, or moral qualities considered normal and desirable. Yo, yo, so, yo. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is as having lost the physical, mental, or moral qualities considered normal and desirable. The Lord, read that again, Jeremiah 15, 1. So we understand what the Lord is saying. Okay, read. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, mm -hmm. holy a right seed. Read. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? The Lord says, how did you turn into a what? How did you turn into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? He says, how did you lose your physical, mental, or moral qualities considered normal and desirable? That's what the Lord is asking. Showing evidence of decline. Mm -hmm. That's what the most High God says. How did we go from the greatest nation on earth to what? To having lost physical, mental, moral qualities considered normal and desirable? Showing evidence of decline. What is the evidence of decline? That's what we are seeing with it. We're happening with the sisters today. Sisters chasing after vain beauty. You understand? The plastic surgery, the bleaching of the skin, the blonde hair, the weave, the fake up, the fake eyelashes, fake nails, fake booty. And all, everything just fake. Be, they're doing booty implants, they're doing breast implants, lip implants, and all that. Fake, 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 fake. That's what the Lord is saying right there. How did that happen? You understand? How did it happen? Because God's commandments are no longer kept. That's why. You understand? That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, 50 verse 2. Book of Psalm, chapter 50, verse 2. Read. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. So the perfection of beauty, God shined it where? In Zion. So that means when you look at us, you see God's perfection of beauty. Let me repeat myself in case I start. When you look at the children of Israel, when you see the black men and black women today, you see the perfection of God's beauty. That's an honor right there. We represent the perfection of the most like God's beauty. That's an honor right there. You understand? So you sisters, you need to pay attention to this thing. You, you, look, you are the perfection of God's beauty. It's time to stop bleaching your skin, blonding your hair, you understand? Wearing promiscuously, Showing your behind and all that, that's not showing, that's not showing the perfection of God's beauty. Mm -mm, it is not. Watch this. Give me Ezekiel 16, verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 10. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 10. Come on. I what? clothed thee also with broidered work. Mm -hmm. I shot thee with with badger's skin. Badger skin. A badger skin. Badger is, a, is an animal. You understand? Very, very precious. Uh, the, the skin of the badger, I mean, that was even used for the tabernacle in the wilderness. So, guess what? The Most High God, he clothed us. He dressed us up. He gave us fashion. He gave us style. That's what we're reading here. Okay? Read. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 10. Come on. I clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with better skin. Come on. And I gathered thee about with fine linen and I covered thee with silk. He gave us linen, you understand, and silk. The most I dressed us up. Not this stuff that we're wearing today. Go ahead. I decked thee also with ornaments and I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. You see that thing? Bracelets on our hands and chains on our necks. The most high God is the one that gave us this style. Our, the styles that we got, fashion and all that. Not the promiscuous garbage that you see today. Mm -mm. We're not talking about that. Really? Modest apparel. 
for, for, for the sister. The most high God is the one that gave you that. Mary wearing mini skirt, that's not God's definition of beauty. Wearing pants as a sister, that's not God's definition of beauty. Blonding your hair, that is not God's definition of beauty. Okay? That's the white man's definition of beauty. The Lord says, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his way. Don't conform to this world. Right? And they put a jewel on, on thy forehead. I put a jewel upon thy forehead. That's why you see our sisters in the congregation, they be putting jewels on their foreheads and all that. They be decking themselves and all that. Yeah, we're getting it from here, right? And earrings in thine ears. Mm. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. Because you see the sisters, they be decking themselves. Especially when we have feast days and all that. You see the sisters, they are bare to the bone. Go ahead. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk. Great. Come on. Embroidered work. Mm -hmm. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful. Thou was what? And thou, and thou was exceeding beautiful. And you were exceeding beautiful. Because guess what? When you look at the sister of the most high God, that's the perfection of his beauty right there. But you sisters must believe that. You sisters must believe what God said and stop listening to the white man. Stop, stop supporting the Chinese with the weave, fake hair and all that. Stop doing that. Okay? We as the, we the, repent, the men that are repenting now, we don't like that. You brothers like that? You like this fake up? No, sir. You yeah. see that? No the way. brothers don't like that. No, sir. The men of the men of this Bible now is coming into this truth, repenting, you know. We don't like that stuff. You understand? We don't. We don't like that. That's not a take give at all. Fake hair, fake lashes. No, that's not nice. We don't like that. We're just gonna pass you like you're transparent. It's time to repent. To put the def the God's beauty, the God's definition of beauty as it is written in this book. That's why Christ says we must be born again. Okay, read it on. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. Watch this, read. And thy renown went forth and thy among renown. the hidden. Thy renown means your fame. It says our fame, go ahead. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. It says our fame, our fame of how beautiful we are. Our fame of our of our, our fashion that, that the Lord gave to us, of the 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 the, 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 the how we deck ourselves, how the Lord commanded us to do so. Guess what? It says our our fame, it says it went out to out the among the hidden for our beauty. So, sisters, the Lord is talking about you here. It says your fame went forth among the hidden, meaning the other nations, white people, Chinese, Arabs, and so forth, for, for your beauty. Right? For it was perfect through my comeliness. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, your beauty is perfect through his comeliness. Meaning his what? His perfection. Right? Which I had put upon thee, says the Lord God. You, you see who put that beauty upon you? The Lord did that. The God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel. He says, he's the one that put the beauty that you've got. He's the one that put it on you. But guess what the black woman does now? Okay, watch this. Watch what the black woman does. Read. Really? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. That's the problem right there. But the black woman, our sister, God says, you decided to trust in your own beauty. Not the beauty that the Lord put on you. Because the beauty that the Lord put on you is what? Your beautiful Afro hair. Because Afro hair is beautiful hair. And guess what? There's many different styles you can do with your fro. So, because this does like to say, Ah, but you know, you can braid. You can use your hair to braid your hair with. You understand? There's many different styles you can do with your hair. In fact, in fact, black people's hair is so versatile, it can do anything. Don't relax your hair. You understand? You are not, you are not born with a hair that is relaxed. So love your hair. Who him in my shower got it black, got it what, what, black like me and all that? You know, you, they say no soft, soft and free. You soften your hair and you free it so that when you shake your head, it looks like it's, you've got a white, what, what do they call it? White girl flip. Hmm? Yeah. 
why girls sleep when you when they they be shaking their head and the hair will be, be, be waving and all that that's where the word soften free comes from you soften it you soften your beautiful natural hair you soften it up because you don't like the way it looks number two you want your hair to flow and wet and wave like the white woman's hair like the chinese woman's hair like the arab woman's hair it's called low self-esteem it's time to put our confidence in the black messiah the god of heaven and earth it's time to do that thing read again ezekiel chapter 16 verse 15 go ahead but thou didst trust in thine own beauty mm. and playest the harlot because of thy renown and you played the whore because of your fame you understand that's why now they are parading all over the internet now our our lovely sisters go ahead and pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by his it was you see that it says now you are pouring out your fornication on everyone that passes by how do you do that you twerk you you wear half naked you understand sisters even leave the house they have no bras on we see their nipples when they are on the street they don't wear no panties we see they are cracked and all that that's what we see on a day that's not beautiful that's not i mean that's you don't have class hmm? let's say that that is is called lack of having class i want a class you have no class the bible is going to give you class hmm? sister okay you don't leave the house who about an underwear what is that you don't leave your house you don't putting a bra on why do you want everybody to be seeing your nipples when you walk in the street you wearing you wearing a see through dress what is that who are you trying why because you are adver is called advertise you advertise you must have class and the bible is the only book that will give you that understand that at the mouth of the holy prophet okay that's why he is it was means everybody will claim you because how do they claim you all they have to do just go to youtube just go to tiktok go to instagram go to twitter you see black women shaking her bum that's what it means it says he is it was You see that thing? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Second Kings, okay? Second Kings chapter nine, the six. Watch this. The makeup, okay? One of the sisters cannot, you know, deck themselves and all that. But the type of makeup I'm talking about, I'm going to show you what what the Lord is talking about, mm-hmm. which is what our sisters are doing today. Watch this. Second, Second King, King chapter 9 verse 30. Second King chapter 9 verse 30. Come on. And you know what? Jehu, hmm. Give me as hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Give me as your focus. Give me a now I have to touch on. I have your focus for. Because the, the the you 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 sisters trusting in your own beauty is what is happening now. This is the spirit that is speaking on our sisters now. It's time to clean up. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4 read what you got Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4 When the Lord Go shall ahead. have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood when hold on when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion what is the filth of the daughters of Zion the filth is the fake up the long eyelashes umbrella the 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 fake nails hmm though that the skills of the daughters of Zion wearing pants smelling down there on your vagina because you're not wearing a dress you get yeast infections and yeast charges and the smells down there that's the skills of the daughters of Zion the daughters of Zion is our sisters you understand wearing pants wearing mini skirts the bum shorts or, that's the skills the most that god says mm-hmm, that is will not be acceptable in is we will not accept that as the men that understand how we must be as a nation okay we will not accept that because we will be doing what we will be doing you at the at the service we will be doing the bible at the service as well okay i'm just giving an example of the field of the daughters of life okay now go back to second kings 9 the stage now watch this second kings chapter 9 verse 30 Right and when Jehu was come to Jezreel Jezebel heard of it Jezebel and 
Jezebel was the queen. She was a demon. She was a beautiful monster, okay? But Jezebel, everything about herself was centered um, around what? Watch this. This is what everything about Jezebel was centered on. On this, she had what? She liked power. You understand? Power, she liked that. Not only that, but she used her feminine wiles to deceive men. Watch this. This is part of it. This is part of a what? This is part of a witchcraft. Read that. Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. What did she do? And she painted her face. When Jezebel knew that Jehu was coming to pay a visit, you know what? Instead, she wasn't known for being a wise woman. Remember, it says, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But a woman that, favor, that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Jezebel was not praised for her wisdom. Jezebel was known for being a demon. Jezebel was known for using her looks to seduce men. Because she knew that judgment was coming for her, you see what she did? The first thing she did, she didn't pray to the Lord. No, no, she prayed to the faith. She put on makeup. You understand? That's the first thing that is on her mind. Okay, go ahead. And tired her head. And tired her head. Meaning she put a head wrap on, beautiful head, these head wraps and all that. She made, she put her some, you know, head wrap on, head scarf. Go ahead. And looked out at the window. And looked out at the window to see Jehu come. So Jezebel's biggest priority was her look. You understand? She didn't pray to the Lord. No, no, she focused on how she looked. Okay? Vain beauty. She was vain. She wasn't real. And she wasn't known for having wisdom. So you sisters in Israel, you sisters coming into this school, you are learning who you are now. You want to repent. You cannot be coming in Israel. You're just known for being a pretty face. No, 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 no. You must study the scriptures. You must apply the scriptures. You must take notes during class. So you can actually learn and study and understand what this Bible is saying. So you can prepare yourself for a wife. So that when you get married, guess what? You will be a help me to your husband. You will be an asset to your husband, not a liability. You're not just going to be a pretty face. You're not going to be a, um, a cost. You must be an investment. You understand? Wisdom. That's what you lead with. Yes, you everybody want to see what you look on the outside. But what you look on the outside is a reflection of what's in the, in the, in the inside. If you believe what the Bible says you do it, we know, okay, the way the sister looks on the inside, we can tell. We can definitely, men of, if the man of God will tell, that's the righteous sister right there. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 4, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 8. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 8. Jezebel was about makeup and all that, how to dress, you know. She was just focused on that and having power to her husband. Watch this. Jeremiah 4, verse 8. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? You see, hold on. When you are spoiled, is the you sisters, when you are spoiled, how you become spoiled? Okay. Hold this. Give me characteristics. I'm going to show you how you are spoiled. Because the media pushes that the black woman can do bad all by herself. That's a lie. You see, they, today the black women, they are the ones that are running the household. The man is not around. Look at the men that they are producing. I give the sisters say the media is teaching the sisters that they can do it by themselves, independent women. By the way, in the black community, the black woman is the only one that says, I'm an independent black woman. You will never hear a Chinese woman say this. You will never hear an Arab woman say dumb stuff like that. It's only the black woman because you've been conditioned to think like that. Now, because of that, you raising kids by yourself, you kicking the men out of the house. So the type of kids that you will produce, especially the men, you're producing weak men. Those weak men is the same men that you complain about when they are older. You say, no, black men ain't ish. Black men, are, they are dogs. They are useless and all those. Because who's raising them? You are raising them. So you complain about the men that you are raising up because you're teaching them to be feminine, to be weak, because they're, they're, there's no male in the house. 
So now when they grow older, now they want to deal with the sister. They don't know how to behave themselves. Who's raising them up? You are doing it. You see how this works? That's why the most High God says, the men are the leaders. In God's movement, the men are the leaders. Understand that. Read that thing for me. Psalm 36 verse 24. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 24. Pray. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. Mm -hmm. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. You see how he says, when you he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. He didn't say a girlfriend. Because girlfriend is there, right there. That's horish. People say a girlfriend. Beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Watch the next verse. That's the one we want. Right now, watch this. Verse 25. Come on. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Stop right there. Where no hedge is, is as there the possession is spoiled. Who's the hedge? The men. The men will be a hedge over you. The men of God, because his hedge is Jesus Christ. You understand? So a hedge, the men... The, a, man of, a man of God who keeps God's commandment, they are going to be able to guide you according to the scriptures you said. Because from your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. So your a daughter's first love is her father. So the father's job is to make sure that the, the daughter is, the daughters, they know the laws of God, they understand that they're preparing themselves, you understand, for being a righteous sister of the Most High. Okay? So when you don't have that, the most High God says, you are going to be a spoiled possession. You are mentally, spiritually, and physically, you are going to be spoiled. Meaning what? The way you think is going to be spoiled, independent woman, but you've got many kids. Okay, but you're not married. Number two, you are not married. You're sleeping around. Nobody's marrying you, but they are getting the milk for free. Because you are mentally, you are spoiled. Because you don't have a father telling you, protecting you. Listen, sister, we don't work like this. You cannot be doing this. You can't dress like that. Your speech must be seasoned with salt. You must speak the right things. You must learn how to talk to men. Because sisters don't know how to do that. But when you come in Israel, we will teach you how to address the men of Israel. That's how we're building the nation this day. You understand? Read the verse again, verse 25. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 25. Read. Right. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Mm -hmm. You see that? Where there's no hedge, the possession is spoiled. How spoiled? Go back to Jeremiah 4, verse 30 again. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And when thou art spoiled. When thou art spoiled, go ahead. What will thou do? What are you going to do, sister, when you are spoiled? Because right now, our sisters are spoiled. Because why? The man is not around. Why? Because a lot of the time when you investigate, so sister, you complaining about this black man. No, he's not around. He, he does. He, he he left me and all that. Okay, why did he leave? What did you do? But the media has conditioned our people out, the sisters, that we must never ask about that. We must just say, you know, the man is evil, is evil. But sister, what was your role in this? What did you do for this man to disappear? Hmm? What did you do? Did you submit yourself to this man? Did you respect this man? Mm -hmm. Or whenever this man talked to you, you talk to him like you're crazy. When he corrects you, you get mad. You get loud. You speak over him. If that's the case, because that's the majority of the reason why today black women are single, because they don't know how to submit themselves to the white to the black man. But they submit to the white man. They do. They know how to say fair. They'll never interrupt the white man. But when they get home, they speak to their husband. They don't respect those men. But they go to church every Sunday. They say, I'm a God-fearing woman. But you don't submit your, yourself to your husband. You don't honor that man. You understand? That's why we're having issues in our community today. But it's Operation Cleanup this day. Read that thing again, verse 30. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Read. And when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? What are you going to do? Go ahead. Though thou clothest thyself with crimson. Crimson. Though, though thou clothest thyself with crimson. 
That goes into what? That makeup. That goes into makeup because the sisters are only concerned about their looks. Look at Bukayimba. Look at Bupel Tooth, those nasty hogs that are chilling and destroying our young girls. Yeah, that's what they are. Those are not righteous women. They don't give a damn about these young girls that are coming up. To them. So that's why we must put them on blast. Yeah, go ahead. Though thou, deck, thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. Though thou decorate yourself with ornaments of gold. That goes into your, your jewelry and all that. Okay, go ahead. Though thou rentest thy face with thy painting. You see that thing? Though thou rentest thy face with painting, makeup. But today the sisters don't know how to put on makeup. It's like somebody just threw something on your face. It's like you become completely somebody different that nobody remembers or can recognize. It's called fake up. Go ahead. In vain shall thou make thyself fair. You see what the you see what the Bible is. That's the most I know what it means. It says, in vain, you're gonna make yourself fair. You're gonna make yourself beautiful in vain. So meaning what? The beauty that you say you have is just vain beauty. It's not authentic because everything that make the quote unquote beauty is all fake. That's what the most high God is saying right there. But the media is promoting by promoting you. By creating platforms for you to what to parade yourself. You understand? Go ahead. Thy lovers will despise thee. You see that thing? Thy lovers will despise thee. Who's thy lovers? The other nations with their platforms. Because who Mark Zuckerberg and all these social media platforms they're building, those are the thy lovers because they don't love you. But God says they will hate you. Ha! Huh? Because they will create platforms where the black woman strips naked on the screen and what? Take selfies and, and upload them on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. That's how these, these nations, they hate you. But you think they love you. Go ahead. They will seek thy life. They will seek thy life because your name, the black woman, what's the reputation of the black woman today? She just twerk. She has multiple children. She never gets married. She just has sex, 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 abortion, abortion, abortion. She don't know how to deal with a man. Yet that's why she's single. That's the image of the black woman today. And it's getting worse. When we go to teach in Shopville, for instance, I was amazed to see mothers. What is that? Mothers carry Heineke. The child has not bust. You understand? The mother is holding a red square. Brutal fruit. But the child is right there just crying. The, the, the snot is coming out of her mouth. Hmm? Yeah. But no removal. Look at the child. I mean, that thing really just really vexed my spirit, man. It made me so mad. I was mad as hell about that thing when I saw it. But they didn't give a damn about that. Okay? They only cared about getting drunk, wearing mini skirts, jiving, shaking their behinds and all that while the child is standing right there. Okay? And they are the same mothers that their children are, they are raised by these men that they sleep with, that they go to clubs with. They are the ones that find ourselves, you know, my child was raised by my boyfriend. Where was you? Where was your mind? No, I was high. I was drunk. Hmm? That's what's going on today. But they say, no, don't talk about that. Your women bash. Mm -mm. This is operation cleanup. We because guess what? One thing that I want, I want to see sisters starting to do in this truth. I want to see sisters correcting other sisters. Because sisters don't do that. Sisters don't hold each other accountable. Sisters don't call each other out. Or say, mm -mm, why are you dressed like that? Why you talk like that? You loud, you got a big mouth. Be quiet. Learn how to listen. Sisters don't know how, don't know, do not correct other sisters. I've seen this thing over and over again, but today is a new day. Understand that thing. Read the verse again, the stage. Okay, watch this. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. Go ahead. And when thou art spoiled, what mm -hmm. will thou do? Though thou closest thyself with crimson, though thou takest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. 
they will seek thy life. You see that thing, thy lovers will despise thee and they will seek thy life. Watch this. Now, give me the book of 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. You know what? Go back to Jeremiah. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something this day. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 4. Read verse 30 again. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30. Come on. And when thou art spoiled, what mm -hmm. without thou closest thyself with crimson, thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Stop right there. I, he said, hold on. In, he says, in vain, you're going to make yourself fair. In vain. So, meaning what? The amount of fake up that the sisters do, this fake stuff that they put on and all that, the most High God says, that's a, that's a sign of low self and low self esteem. That's what the most High God is saying. That is a sign of lack of confidence. That is a sign of a low self esteem. That's why you sisters are here, so you can be built up. So you can be taught the laws of God to start to love yourself the way the Lord made you. Understand that. Watch this. Okay. Watch this thing right here. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Now read that. This is Urban Dictionary. Okay. Let's read that thing. Reading from UrbanDictionary.com. Mm hmm the definition of fake up. Fake up is makeup that makes you look different. You see that? It says fake up is makeup that makes you look different. Meaning you nobody gonna recognize you. That that sister right there? Yes, yeah, that's her. No, that's not the sister. That's fake up. Okay. Read the next part. Okay, this one right here. Special effects makeup. Special effects makeup. Special effects. You ever seen these movies? You ever seen the Matrix? When Neo is flying, dodging bullets and all? That's called special effects. So the, the type of makeup that the sisters are doing now is special effects makeup. Fake up. Where you cannot even recognize what they look like. You can't recognize oh, that's them right there. Okay? Now, look at what they are saying here. Read that. So, Fake up is different from regular makeup. Regular makeup is not fake up. Okay. Regular makeup is when you read the book of Judy, our foremother, yeah, she had regular makeup. Our sisters today, they put on fake up. Now watch this. Read that. Jeff. Hey man. Come on. That chick looks hot. Mm -hmm. Joey. What is Joey? No, say? man. No, man. She's just wearing fake up. You see, nah, man, she's just wearing fake up. <laughs> you see that? that? That's what we read in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you something this day. Okay. Now, let's, this is fake up. Let's look at that. This is Kanimba right here. You brothers can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. This is the new picture. You see that? That right there is called fake up. Okay? This is fake up right here. Fake up. She looks like a drag queen. You know drag queen is a man eh, trying to be a woman? Yes, sir. You brothers know that, right? You sisters? A drag queen is a man wanting to be a woman. She, he dresses like a woman. Put makeup on, weave the, the whole the whole nine years. You cannot even tell if that's a man. You brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so this is faker. Now, okay, I don't think that's it. They might have uh, did some Photoshop there, but this is the sister. Okay. Fake up. You see how she looks? Bleach. Okay. Liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. You can see this picture, right? Brother? All praises, sir. Okay, all praises. Now, watch this. 
This is there. Can you bow? Okay. Uh, read it. Briefly. Reading from briefly. Uh -huh. SA celebrities before and after plastic surgery. So South African celebrities before and after plastic surgery. Let's see. We're not going to read all that. But I just want to show you. That's our sister, Kanimbao, before the fake up. You understand? When she represented the definition of God's beauty. Now, when the devil jumped on her, look what she looked, how she looked now. Now, this is because this is the standard of beauty. This is not beauty. Okay? Simps will fall for this stuff. A simp will fall for this. Let's keep going. Here's another one. Plastic surgery. Do you see this, brother? Yes, sir. Brother, do you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is Queen. Look at before. You see the sister? She looks beautiful here. Look here, right here. She looks like what? She's, she, hey, you can see something has, has happened here. Do you see this? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Fake up. Fake up. This is not beautiful. This is not, this is not beautiful. Okay. The sister here, she was still beautiful. Here. Oh, no, not here. Let's keep going. I don't know who this is. I can't see the difference. Okay. You see this, our system shows us that passed on. You see how she was before? Natural. Although she put on uh, horse hair on her head, raccoon hair. But you see, she still had that beautiful black skin that the Lord gave her. But look the after picture. Fake up. This one right here, this is permanent fake up. Because she can't reverse it. Okay. Here's another one. Parki I don't know her, but yeah. Look at that. Fake up. Plastic surgery. You, you see, you know what God they are worshipping? They are worshipping the goddess of the goddess of health and beauty. Kitesh. That goddess of Egypt. That's what's going on today in spiritual Egypt. So those gods back then that we worshipped when we were in Egypt, that's what's going on today. The white men went all the way back to dig them up to bring them here. That's why now they are happening on a technological scale. That's why you've got plastic surgeons and all that. They are, they are that is what they are doing. Cosmetic surgery. Okay. The worship of Kitesh. You see this? Look at the nose. Look at the nose now. You see that thing right there? Hmm. Got that sharp nose. Uh -huh. I hope you can see that. This is Pam Andrews. Before, look at the after. That's not beautiful. This is not beautiful. She looked like a drag queen. Plus this woman, oh my God. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Um, Selani Tambo. Okay, why didn't they show the before picture? I thought they would have the before and after. This is KB, ne? Yes, sir. Anybody know KB? This is KB. Plastic surgery as well. Sir. You see this part right there? That part right there. You see what she did? Mm. Yeah. Fake up. That's not this is not beautiful. Okay. Now here's another one. Anybody know who this is? Lil Kim. Yes, sir. This is Lil Kim. Would you ever recognize her if I only <laughs> showed you this? Would you uh, recognize who this is if she didn't? If no, I didn't you wouldn't recognize this. Sister. She was sir. still beautiful here. You understand? Mm. Look the before picture. Look at the after picture. She mm. looks like a Moabite. Mm. She looks like Xi Jinping. Okay. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> she looks like Kim Jinping. Is that Kim Jinping? <laughs> 
Now she looks like Kim Jong-un. Xi Jinping. That's what they look like. Now. But the sister was still beautiful. Look what she did to herself. Hmm? Fake up. Okay. This is crazy. Okay. This is ridiculous. Look at the sister. Look how she was here. Look what, what she did to herself. Hmm? Ah, come on, sister. It's time to return back to this Bible. The most High God defined your beauty as perfect. You decided, you trusted. Read that verse again in Ezekiel 16. Okay? I want this verse to marinate. Ezekiel chapter 16. Read verse 14 and 15 together again. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 14. Go ahead. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Read. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. You see that thing? You see what happens, sisters, when you trust upon your own beauty? This is what happens when you trust upon your own beauty. From the beauty that the Lord gave to your own beauty. You see that? This was the beginning stages of trusting in her own beauty. You see what she did here? That was the beginning stages. Okay. Look where she is now. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't make it up. Okay. You see now, she's more, she's basically, she was basically transforming slowly. You see that thing? From here, look where she is now. This is crazy. Okay. This is ridiculous. Watch this. Here's another one. Okay. This is just normal people. This right here, this is witchcraft. I'm telling you straight up. <laughs> Brothers, this right here, this is witchcraft. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you meet this sister, and then the next day you see the, you meet this you meet this one you meet the one on the right the next day you see this ah uh, listen imagine that imagine on the wedding night you go into the wedding chamber the next morning this is what you see hmm. <laughs> ah come on now sisters oh no mm. after now you want your lobola bag yeah. hmm? Actually, there was an Arab man that actually sued another family and said, listen, this is what you gave me, but this is what I woke up. I want my money back. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. Let's get some more. Look at that. Hmm. You see this? Fake hair, fake nails, fake face. Everything just fake. Hmm? This is fake up, brother. Fake up. Okay? Fake up. Look what the sister did. She said, no, no, this is not beautiful. I want this. I want this look right here. Hmm? Guess what? When you keep God's commandment, your skin starts to clear and all of that when you do the right stuff. You just follow counsel. The stuff will start to change as it is written in the Bible. You don't have to do go through all these gymnastics. Now, let's see. Here's another one. You see this? Mm. Look at this. Yeah, because this is already all oh, these are issues right here. Look at that. Ah, uh, these are all issues. But guess what? All the sister has to do take off the weave and all that. Okay, be feminine. Okay. Keep God's commandment, change your dress code, cover up as a sister and all that. Guess what? Everything going to be good. But now, this is what the sisters are selling. They're selling this, but this is what they look like. Hmm? Hmm. Come on, sisters. Where's the love? Now, let's look at this. One. Hmm. So, the sister here, she hates this. She went for this. Mm -hmm. So she destroyed her own beautiful afro hair. You understand? All the sister has to do is just cover up, 
we don't have to see that. The sister can cover up nicely, wear beautiful dress and all that. You understand? The sister must start to exercise so she can release the toxins out of her body. Her skin will start to clear. She eats right and all that. Keep the commandments. No, I learn how to be hygiene according to the scriptures. Guess what? The sister will look excellent. But yes, she went for this. This is when you trust in your own beauty. Hmm? Okay, now here's another one. Let's see. Anybody know who this is? No, sir. No, sir. This, 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 this is called Sydney Star. That's the name. The name is Sydney Star. <laughs> That's the name, right? Hmm. You might be wondering, why am I showing this? Okay. Because I know, hey, you brothers, don't get some spirit. Now, look at this, right? Yes, sir. We're together. This is Sydney Star, right? Sydney Star. We're together so far. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to show you something, right? That will show you. Anybody think this is beautiful? No, you many sir. brothers don't think. <laughs> no, sir. Now watch this. Actually, this is a man. <laughs> oh yeah, none of you saw it, right? This right here, this is a man. <laughs> this is the brother. Yeah, this is the before. This is before. Okay, this is before. This is before. Yeah, this is before. Read that part like this. Reading articlemix.com. Sydney Star before and after sex change surgery. Is she still on hormones? Now, it, this is not a she. This is a he. Okay. This is a man. This is not a woman. But you'll be confused thinking that the woman. No, this is a man. He did a sex change. This is how he looks. But because of trusting in his own beauty, this is what happens next. This is the next thing that took place. So you brother, you better be very mindful. You like, you think this is beautiful. You don't know you're, you're dealing with a man. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Oh yeah, that well will never run dry. Understand that thing. You'll hear about it every day online because you will not be with us. Now, yeah, this is a man. This is not a woman. This is a man right here. He did a sex change. Now he's calling himself Sydney Star. I just wanted to show you that, brothers and sisters, especially you, sister. Okay? Now, give me the book of First Timothy 2 verse 9. I'm almost done. First Timothy 2 verse 9. Read that for me. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. What? In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That women adorn themselves in hold on. Women adorn themselves in modest apparel. With with shamefacedness, they must have shame. They must have shame. Modest apparel that's long, beautiful dress. Head scarves and all that. Read on. No mini scared, no bum show. Go ahead. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So the Apostle Paul was addressing the fact that he says women must dress up in more as apparel. Because during this time, you understand, they were not doing this. They were not dressed up in more as apparel. Because what was going on is that, give me that in First Timothy 1. First Timothy chapter 1, read verse 2. Okay, watch this. Because Timothy was dealing with the church of Ephesus. Okay, watch this. First Timothy 1 verse 2. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 2. Come on. And to Timothy, my own son in the faith, 
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father in Jesus Christ our Lord. Go ahead. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when you know I went in, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. He says, I besought thee to abide still, meaning stay at, at Ephesus. Remain at Ephesus for now. Go ahead. When I went into Macedonia, mm -hmm. that thou mightest charge some that, that they teach no other doctrine. That you must command some that they must teach no other doctrine. Because what was going on in the church of Ephesus? Women were above the men. Women were being worshipped in the church of Ephesus. That's why the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. He said, listen, in like manner also, go back to 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel because there was a doctrine going on in the church of Ephesus that women can dress however they want. Okay, go ahead. With shamefacedness. Meaning they, were, they did not have shame. They just rocked up the church and the congregation, half naked, blonde in their hair and all that. With? And sobriety. Not mm -hmm. with braided hair or gold Come on. Or, or costly array. Meaning they were putting their emphasis on their look, what they, how they look on the outside. You understand? They didn't care about God's commandments. They just wanted to seduce men in the congregation by what? By showing their boobs. The same thing that's happening today in the Christian church. That was what was going on in the church of Ephesus. Guess which, which demon they were worshipping? Give me Acts. Okay. Let me show you who they were worshipping. Watch this thing right here. Acts chapter 19. Okay. Acts chapter 19. Let's read verse Read verse 28, Acts 19, verse 28. You know what? Start at verse 27. Acts chapter 19, verse 27. Come on. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence Rich. should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. You see that thing? So Diana was the goddess, the, the goddess of fertility, the goddess of sex and orgies and, and fornication, sexual immorality. Diana of the, of, of the Ephesians. You understand? The goddess of sex. So the reason why the apostle Paul is writing to Timothy is telling him, listen, they at Ephesus, make sure they teach no other dogs outside of the one that I told you. Because why? The woman was the woman was they were worshiping the woman in the church, Jezebel. Okay, read. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. You see what they were doing? They were saying, full of wrath, because the apostle Paul and and and, and who was he with? Was he with Barnabas? They were teaching against um, they were teaching against Diana. They were teaching against idolatry. You understand? So he said, listen, no, no, no. We, they, now they were angry with the apostle Paul is teaching against Diana. And they were going to lose money because they made silver shrines for Diana. And the people were buying that stuff. Okay? So that's how they make money. Go ahead. And the whole city was filled with confusion. Come on. And having... And having called Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. Okay, so he says, that, he says what? He says, having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companion in travel. So Paul wasn't, but he was with Gaius and Aristarchus. But what I want to show you here is, you see that part right there when they were saying that... Um, um, what it says, the magnificent must be destroyed, whom all the world, whom all Asia and the world worship. I want to show you something. Read verse 25. Watch this. Read 24 and 25 together. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Go ahead. 
for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, Come on. whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. And by this, he says, he said, but you know by, by this craft we have our wealth. They made money creating silver, silver shrines for Diana, right? They had, our, they had their wealth because they sold it. How do you think Mark Zuckerberg makes money? How do you think the creators of TikTok make money? How do you think the creators of uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and whatever, YouTube and all, how do you think they make money? Black women only fans. What do they, how do they make money? They make money through black women um, prostituting themselves and prostituting their daughters online, taking selfies and videos and videos and all that, uploading them on these social media platforms. That's how these nations are making money from the black women because they are what? That's the version of them taking silver shines for Diana because by that craft, they have, they have, they have their world. That's the same thing today. That's the same thing today. Because Facebook is free. That's what they say. But what is the product? The product, TikTok is free. But who's the product? The people that upload, especially black women that upload naked videos of themselves on these platforms, they are the product. That's how Mark Zuckerberg are able to make money out of our sisters. Just like it was going on during this time. That's why when we teach the things again, when we teach to build our nations up, what do they do? They block our videos, they shut down our pages and all that. You understand? You, you brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. You understand how do we are affecting their world? Yes, sir. When yes, sir. we teach the gospel of Christ. Now read verse 34. Acts chapter 19, verse 34. Go ahead. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space for, of two hours cried out, great is Diana of the Ephesians. You see that thing? Great is Diana of the Ephesians, the goddess of sex. They were worshiping that. That's what's going on today. That's why the black women, they be wearing the way they do. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, the goddess of sex. That's Diane. Aphrodite. Inan. Isis. Yeah, this is her right here. They've been transforming this demon for years. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Yeah, right here. You see this? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what you are seeing right here. Huh. The goddess of uh, sex and orgies and all that. Yes, this is what you are seeing here. Right here. Even in India, you see that? That's, 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 that's India, right? Also. Ancient Mesopotamia. You see where they come from? That's her right there. Yeah, that's how our sisters are dressed. That's how they dress today. Our sisters, they dress like this. This is Roman architecture, okay? In Rome, there was a lot of fornication going on in Rome. How do you think today it looks? It's worse now. Okay, okay, let's close that. Brothers be having other stuff now. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna show you what she looked like here from the beginning. They just started changing her color over time. But she she actually didn't look painted white like this. Oh yes, yeah. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something this day. This is coming all the way from Egypt, but watch this. You men see this? Watch this thing right here. You see what color she is? Yes, sir. She's black. Hmm. What are they saying here? The statue of Artemis of Ephesus. Hmm. 
Diane of the Ephesians. That's her right there with multiple breasts. That's why our sisters, when they dress like this and all that, these fake ups that they do, they are worshiping this goddess right here. The goddess of sex, which translates into what the goddess of, of health and beauty and all that, plastic surgery and whatnot, booty enhancement and lip enhancement and all that. This is her right here. You understand? Yeah, you brothers and sisters see that? Yes, sir. Right there. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Go back to First Timothy 2, verse 9. I'm almost done. First Timothy 2, verse 9. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Come on. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with bloated hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Because this is what was going on during that time. The sisters, they did not adorn themselves in modest apparel. They did not have shame. They did not have sobriety. But the only emphasis they put on was what? Their braided hair, their gold, their pearls, or costly array. They only cared about how they dressed, and they did not dress modest. That's what the Apostle Paul had to address this. The Apostle Paul wasn't saying they mustn't put on earrings. They must not, you know, braid their hair or lock their hair and all. He didn't say that. He wasn't saying that. The precept for that is don't go, go to first Peter 3. First Peter chapter 3, read verse 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. Uh -huh. And of wearing of gold or Wait. of putting on of apparel. You see what the apostle Paul, the apostle Peter is saying, listen, he says, your emphasis, your beauty does not, is, is not how you look on the outside. I mean, you don't put emphasis on what you look or what you look like on the outside. Let that not be your main priority. He says, who's adorning, let it not be that, that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. That's why our sisters, you see, they put emphasis on their make, their fake up. Fake nails, fake hair, fake lashes, fake everything. You understand? The Lord was saying, no, don't do that. Now they put emphasis on that, but they don't know how to cook. She don't know how to talk to a man. She don't, she can, she don't know how to respect a man. She cannot submit to the herself to a man. She don't want to keep God's commandments. She doesn't want to dress modestly and all that. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. So, but our sisters, they put emphasis on that. I'll give you an example. Give me Proverbs real quick. I think it's Proverbs 11. This is what uh, King Solomon said, okay? Proverbs 11 verse 22, because it's explained like this. Because they put emphasis on the, they make, they fake up and all that, fake, fake, fake everything. Watch this. That, that which they do, it's like what we're about to read. Read this. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 22. Come on. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 22. Read. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. The Bible says, as a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, meaning what? A go you find gold in the nose of a pig. A, a jewel of gold, you see, a jewel of gold in the nose of a pig is sitting in the wrong place. You, you understand? I mean, a pig is a filthy, unclean, disgusting animal, right? But you're going to find jewel of gold in the, in the nose of a pig. The Lord is saying, so is a what? So is a woman. So is a fair woman, which is without discretion. So is a beautiful woman that dresses like a hoe. You see that thing? So the most that God is saying, just because the sister, you know, she has a cleavage out, she has their size out and all of that, the Lord is saying it's like putting jewelry on a pig. It's like putting a jewel, jewelry on a pig, putting lipstick on a pig. That's what the Lord is saying. That's some heavy stuff right there. So go back to First Peter 3. Read the say again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Whose adorning, let it not be that that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold 
or of putting on of apparel. Right. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart is who? Is Christ. Christ is that hidden man, you understand, of the heart. Okay, go ahead. In that which is not corruptible. In that which is not corruptible. So guess what? The hidden man will be what? Because your mind must be according to the mind of your husband. You're not married. Your mind must be according to the mind of your leadership. You understand? Because they follow Christ. That's the hidden man. Go ahead. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, Mm -hmm. which is in the sight of God of great price. You see that thing? That right there is as in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. He says, that's like that, you lead with that. The Lord says, you sisters, that's the example that you must have. That's the type of behavior that you, the conduct that you must conduct yourself with. The ornament of a meek and quiet, meek means submissive. You must be submissive. You must, be, you must not be a loud mouth, which is in the sight of God of great price. That's what the Lord is talking about right there. You understand? The proof of that, get Sarah 26, verse 14. Sarah 26, verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastic, verse 26, verse 14. Come on. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent and loving woman, that's a gift of the Lord right there. Go ahead. And there is nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. You see that thing right there? That's why it says the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. That's why it says there's nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. It's silent and loving. It says, it says that's a gift from the, from the most high. The most high, is the, that's the gift he'll give you. You understand? For wife. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. A shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace. Hmm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. You see that her continent mind cannot be valued. Her continent her mind that is disciplined according to the laws of God is that you cannot put a price on that system. She's priceless. That's what the most like God is saying. I hope you sisters are paying attention and listening. Okay. This right here, that's how you're gonna become that that double grace. But if you loud, you obnoxious. You are not the gift of the you, the gift of Satan. Okay. Now go back to first Peter 3. Read verse 4. Read verse uh, verse 4 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, mm-hmm. in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. And the fear of God is of great price. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So now watch this. Because the most I wasn't saying they must put, he wasn't saying don't put on makeup and all that. No, no, no. He said don't put on fake up. You know, don't be faking the funk. Everything about you is fake, but you want a real man. Hmm. That will make no sense whatsoever. Well, watch this. Now, give me the book of Judith. Let me show you an example of our foremother. Okay. Our foremother, Judith. Because she kept the commandment, she decked herself up. Okay. Watch this. Give me Judith 10. Judith 10, read verse 3 for me. Okay. Judith chapter 10, verse 3. Come on. And put off the sackcloth which she had on, and put off the garments of the widowhood, and washed her body all over with water, mm. and anointed herself with precious ointment. You see that thing? She understood this. You, you know what? You know this goes into, I'm going to deal with that. You know when you read in the, the Egyptian play, the, you know that God of uncleanness? Oh, yes, yeah. It, 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 it goes with this where it says, it says, put off the garments of a widowhood and wash their body all over with water and anointed the soul with precious ointment. So, this, our foremother, she didn't worship that God of uncleanness. Hmm. Woo! Read that verse again, verse 3. Judith chapter 10, verse 3. Go ahead. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on, 
mm-hmm. and put off the garment of the widowhood Wait. and washed her body all over with water and Come anointed on. herself with precious ointment. And anointed herself with precious ointment. Wait. And braided the hair of her head and put on a tie upon it and put on her garment of gladness wherewith she was glad during the life of Manasseh's husband. So now what we're reading here is our foremother Judith, she's decking herself. You understand? He says she braided her hair, she put on her head wrap, she put a tie upon it and all that. She anointed her face, she smelled good, she looked good. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 4. And she took sandals upon her feet and put about her her bracelets mm-hmm. and her chains Go and ahead. her rings and her earrings mm. and all her ornaments and decked herself bravely to, to allure the eyes of all men that should see her. Because she had a mission. She was on a mission. But the point is, our foremother Judith, yeah, she decked herself. But the, the difference is, the difference between our foremother Judith, that righteous sister, versus the sisters today that just put on, they decked themselves and all that. That's all that, that's all they think that they are babies. They put all their emphasis, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. So it, it, it does not correlate, doesn't work hand in hand. You understand? Another thing is, they don't know how to dress. So already, they've already, they are not moving correctly. So which means they, they first need to learn how to dress, number one. Two, they, need, they learn the laws of God, which is part of the dress code and all that. Then guess what? The beauty, that beauty will not be in vain. And it will not be fake up. It's going to be real. It's going to be natural. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Judith chapter 12, chapter 11, verse 21. The, the mindset of our foremother, Judith, she was beautiful. Not only that, she had wisdom. Okay, watch this. Chapter 12, chapter 11, verse 21. Read that. Judith chapter 11, verse 21. Mm-hmm. There is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other both for beauty of face and wisdom of words. Mm. Both for beauty of words and both for beauty of face, meaning she was beautiful, sister, and wisdom of words. She was beautiful. Not only that, she had wisdom. Watch this. And guess what? Here's another thing. Because I did mention this before, but I'm going to mention it again. When you read the the story of our former mother, Judith, you get to see the type of man she was married to. Because she's a reflection of her husband. So you get to see the type of man she was married to. You understand? He was an honorable man. He kept the commandments. He taught the commandments of the Most High. Now watch this. Get that in Judith 12. Now read verse 14. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. So we're coming here to give an example of the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter. They were not saying sisters cannot dress nice. They cannot you know, deck themselves out. No, he was not saying it. They were saying, don't put emphasis on that. Not only that, you must know how to dress because they don't know how to dress. So they must learn how to dress modestly, then deck themselves. But guess what? Them wearing modestly is a testament that the hidden men of the heart, they know the scriptures. Okay? Now read that, verse 14. Judith, chapter 12, verse 14. Wait. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my Lord? Hmm. Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily. Go ahead. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. Now read that again, read that again. You sisters, you must see this and let this thing sink into your spirit. Read it again. Judith chapter 12 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then said Judith unto him, who am I now that I should gain save my Lord? Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. You see that thing? That right there. He says, who am I now that I should gain save my Lord? Meaning what? I'm building you destroying, you gain save your Lord. Surely whatsoever pleases him, I will do speedily. Meaning no lip, no resistance, which is the spirit of Satan. And it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. Brothers, this type of sister right here, you must fast for this type of sister. 
You pray for this type of sister. You be patient for this type of sister right here. She's not going to fall on your lap. Okay? Sisters, you know, when you read this, you must like, you know what, Father, let me pay attention, take notes, apply the scriptures, follow counsel, so I can ascend into this type of woman right here. You sisters understand that, right? Yes, sir. All praises to the most high. All praises. Now, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. Um, give me, go back to Proverbs now. We're going to do full sex. Proverbs 31, verse 30 again. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful mm -hmm. and beauty is vain. Great. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You see that? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Because this right here, it goes on forever. Watch this. I'm going to show you something, right? Give me the book. Give me the book of Luke 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. This is our former from the type of Asher. Okay. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Watch this thing. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Come on. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. So this is our foremother right here. Is that she was a prophetess of great age. She was an aged woman, like we read in Titus 2, verse 3. Okay, go ahead. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, mm -hmm. which departed years. not from the temple. So she was 84 years old. Come on. Which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Mm. She served God with fasting and prayers night and day. Go ahead. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. And spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. You see that thing? It says, and she spake of him, you know, to all them. The him is Christ. To all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. You understand? So she said the right example. She was a righteous sister. Okay, she was a virtuous woman. So that's why it says, but a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. That's why her memory is written. That's why her name is recorded. What she was doing. The Lord saw fit to lead this right here. So for, for you sisters to see this and say, you know what? I want to pattern myself like her. Okay, that's why it says, but a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. She was an aged woman. Our foremother right here. Okay, from the tribe of Ash. So when you see that thing, that's supposed to inspire you, you sisters. And say, you know what? I want to be just like this. Okay. That's what we're reading here. Go back to Proverbs 31. Okay, let's take it again. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful. You know what? And Hold on. You see here, they are, they are mentioning that um, our former, she was of great age. Okay, watch this. Give me Titus 2, verse 3. She was of great age. And this is her, her focus was what? Keeping up the commandments of the Lord being a righteous example to what? The young sisters coming behind you. Watch this. Titus 2 verse 3. Read it. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. Come on. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, mm -hmm. not false accusers, Wait. not given too much wine, Come on. teachers of good things. You see that thing? This aged woman, the example of that aged woman is our foremother and now from the tribe of Ash. Okay? So she set the right example as an aged woman. Read on. That they may teach the young women to be sober. The aged woman must teach the young women to be sober. Come on. To love their husbands. Mm -hmm. To love their children. You see that thing? Go ahead. To be discreet. Chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blessed. You see what is now? This everything that we're reading here, chapter verse four and five, 
is what the aged woman will teach the young women. They're, therefore, they will set the right example for them so that they don't focus on their fake ups and all of that, but they must focus on what? Keeping up the commandments of the Lord and that the Lord of the word, the word of God transform them spiritually, mentally, and physically as well. So that will be their focus to learn from the aged sisters so they can grow in this truth. That's the order, that's the process that we must follow according to as it's written. Now watch this. Give me that in Romans real quick. Romans, okay, chapter 16, read verse 1. Watch this. Romans, chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, what? which is the servant of the church, which is at St. Crea. So now, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is a sanctuary. So what's happening here is you see the examples of sisters that, that come after our foremother uh, and now from the type of Asia. She was the aged woman. Look at the women that come after her. They followed her footsteps. You understand? They were comforting the prophets. They were helping the prophets. They were helping push the gospel. By what? By helping the apostles when they were trapped and so forth. That's why the apostle Paul is saying, listen, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is the servant of the church. She was helping. She put a brick in. You understand? She created a good name for herself. You know? That ye receive her in the Lord as become saints. Right? And that he assist her in whatsoever business she has need of you. You see that thing? Because what? She put in work. So she was following after the footsteps of our foremother and now. Right? For she had been a succor of many and of myself also. You see that? She was what? She was playing the hospitality role also, receiving the prophets and so forth. That's why I said she has been a succor of many and of myself also. So the apostle Paul is what? Is, is, um, is, 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 is putting a good memory of our foremother, uh, Phoebe. Yeah. That's what we read in right here. So she was following the footsteps of the aged woman, an example, our foremother, Anna, from the tribe of Ash. Okay. So this, has, this, this cannot happen without using the righteous examples of our foremother, of our foremothers. You understand? Our foremothers, Judith, our foremothers, and now our foremother, Phoebe, you understand? Priscilla and so forth, Mary, Andronica, and, and then Junia. That's what we're reading here in the book of uh, Romans chapter 16. But I'm giving you an example of the type of sisters that you sisters must look up to and follow and pattern yourself after. The type of righteous examples they left behind for you. Now, okay. That's it on that. That's it on the. Go back to Proverbs again. Proverbs 31. Verse 30. One more again. Proverbs 31. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful. Come and on. Beauty is vain. Great. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But a woman that what? But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. But the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, I'm going to show you something. Okay, watch this. Because the type of women we don't want to see is this type of women right here. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Okay, I think it's Isaiah 57. Give me Isaiah 57, right? Isaiah 57 verse 2. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 2. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. So now this talk about the righteous that will be taken away. But I want to show you something. The demons that will be put to death. Watch the next verse. Come on. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorcerers. Ye sons of the, the sorcerers. Meaning what? The sons of the sorcerers talk about those that are there into idolatry. Go ahead. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. I'm going to show you the seed of the adulterers and the whore. Keep going. Against whom do you sport yourselves? 
against whom may he a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Stop right there. Are ye, it says, against whom do you what? Against whom do ye sport yourselves? It says, against whom do ye sport yourself? Meaning, against whom do you what? Do you pattern yourself? Because it says what? You are sporting yourself against whom? Mocking the Lord to pattern themselves against whom? Against the oppressed by going against the most high. Go ahead. Against whom make ye a white mouth? Against whom make ye a white mouth? Ray? And draw out the tongue. And draw out the tongue. Hold this. Give me the rack. Give me Ecclesiastes. Watch this. Give me the rack. Ecclesiastes chapter 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, read 26 verse 25. Write 26 verse 25. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 25. Come on. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Go ahead. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. But the woman that is shamefaced, like we read um, in First Peter, is a that one, she fears the Lord, but the shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. What do dogs do? Dogs, they stick their tongue out. It says a shameless woman is just like that. They like to stick their tongue out. Proverbs 30 verse 20. Let me show you why they stick their tongue out. Proverbs 30 verse 20. Because this, what we're reading here, is what our sisters are doing today, proudly so. Watch this. Proverbs 30 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 20. Go ahead. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Their way of an adulterous woman, meaning the behavior, the conduct, the mannerism of an adulterous woman. Wait. She eateth and wipeth her mouth. She does what? Says, she eateth and wipeth her mouth. Just like a dog does. Is that she eats and she wipes her mouth. What is she eating? She's performing oral sex on all these men that she meets. She eats. She wipes her mouth. What does she say? And say it. I have done no wickedness. I have done no wickedness. I'm pure. I'm holier than that. You understand? That's them today. It says that's the Christian church. That's the women in the Christian church. These celebrities and all that. These rappers. These strippers that now rap and all that. Stripper rap. Rappers and all that. Mm -hmm. That's them. It says... She is the shall such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. It says, The shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. She'll be sticking her tongue out, eating and wiping her mouth, saying, I've done no wickedness. That's what Jada, Jada Pinkett do. That's what she did. She slept with that boy, Agas Alcina. That's his name, right? Yes, sir. And when Will Smith said to her, Listen, um, your transgression, you let's talk about your transgression. She said, I don't see it as a transgression. I see it as an entanglement. She eats and she wipes her mouth. That's what she said. She said, I don't see this thing as a sin, I mean, being an adulterer, but it's an entanglement. That's what we're reading. That's the way of an adulterous woman. You see what the Bible is saying? Watch this. Okay, go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 57. Okay. Read verse 4 again. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and throw out the tongue? Wait. Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? You see that thing? It says, Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Watch this. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me share my scripture. What the Bible is talking about. Hmm. That right there. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Hmm. You, brother, do you see that? All praises, sir. Uh, that right uh, there. Read the verse again. Read verse 4 again. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? You see that thing? Are you not against whom? Is it against whom do you make a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? This is Caribbean. This is Megan Thee Stallion, right? 
They are the ones that were singing that, that song called WAPS, wet ass, P-U-S-S-Y. That's them. These two black demons right here. Okay? That's what we're reading about them. It says a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Because that's what dogs do. They open their mouth wide. They eat. They lick everything. They wipe everything. They say, I've done no wickedness. Yeah, I'm not a whore. I'm an artist. So what is your trade? Being a whore. That's your art. You see that thing? Okay. All praises to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. You know what? No, no. Before I end the class, give me the book. When you keep God's commandments, here's what's going to happen to the beauty. Your beauty will not be vain when you keep God's commandments and you are serious and you are sincere as a sister. Here's what's going to happen to you. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 26. Read verse, read verse 16. We're going to read that. You know what? Start of verse 13. I'm going to show you how this, how this comes together. Okay? Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Come on. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, mm -hmm. and her discretion will fetter his bones. Meaning this woman right here, when he's building, she's going to help him build as well. It says what? Her discretion will fatten his bones, a pill of rest. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. By the way, these are prerequisites of what we're about to read later on. Okay, go ahead. And there is nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. Come on, read. That goes into submission. Okay, read on. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm hmm and her continent mind cannot be valued. Meaning this woman, she's shameful. She's faithful. She's what? She's loyal. Go ahead. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven, mm -hmm. so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of a house. You see that thing? Is that the beauty of a good wife in her is how she orders her house. Her spiritual house and her physical house too. Go ahead. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick, the clear light so, that is, hold on, the clear light that is upon the holy candlestick. The candlestick is the menorah. You understand? That light is the laws of God. The candlestick represents the menorah. The light that comes from it represents the laws of the Most High God, according to Proverbs 6, verse 23. Read that again, verse 17. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 17. Mm -hmm. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. Oh, that's beautiful right there. It says, so is the, the same. The same way the clear light is upon the holy candlestick, the menorah, it says, the, is the same way as the beauty of the face in ripe age. Meaning what? Yes, you're aging physically, but you still look young. It says, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. Ripe age is when you grow older. The, that's the real ripe age. That's when, when you grow older and all that, you still look young. And how do you get that? What we're reading here. Verse 13 all the way up, all the way down to verse 16. These are the prerequisites. You, you brothers, you sisters understand that? Yes, sir. Uh huh. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Most High. Yeah, now I can end the class now. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, 
and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All mm -hmm. praise to the Lord. All praises. 